So in the past week or so, we got this big e-drama story about Steven Crowder, a former employee, his ex-wife, their divorce, and oh boy, the debate was raging. But I think there's a lot of underlying issues in the media landscape, in general divorce and culture that has led to a lot of conversations around who is right and who is wrong. And uh, I also think there's, a, there's an interesting drama element to how the independent media machine operates, but how this lends itself to the future of media in general. So the question being, of course, that uh, this former employer uh, uh, employee of Steven Crowder, uh, Jared, had uh, asked for lots of money because he was being legally abused. Crowder, of course, uh, hasn't. I don't. I don't believe Crowder has actually spoken to it, but uh, there has been a bigger conversation about how you could be under NDA while actually breaking the NDA and raising money. And I, I don't want to say too much because I want to start from the beginning of the story without just introing you know, the whole story. But then, of course, I think there's an interesting conversation around how how divorce works, what this wh how the, the, the drama that we're seeing lends itself to the larger culture around divorce and relationships. But then even beyond that, media manipulation, because, of course, there's also stuff we can talk about pertaining to Daily Wire and Candace Owens. So we're just going to talk about independent media landscape, NDAs, media manipulation, and uh, a lot more around this. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say, we, we had a couple guests. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself first? Sure. Uh, my name is Ariadna Jacob. You can call me Ari. I am a former talent agent. I represented uh, probably some people you guys don't know, uh, Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Ray, but they make about, you know, several, t probably $10 million a year or more. Wow. Uh, and uh, I represented, I worked with Canelo Alvarez, the boxer, all sorts of different celebrities. And I have been in sort of social media for a very, very long time, back since like MySpace days. Um, you, were, and, you were also involved in uh, yeah. a lawsuit? <laughs> yeah, so I kind of famously sued uh, Taylor Lorenz and the New York Times for defamation uh, because I had a very successful talent agency and uh, it was destroyed with a uh, libelous article by uh, Taylor and uh, she was represented by the talent agency uh, that took all my clients when, uh, you know what I'm wow. saying? So this is a conflict of interest. So I'm aware of this uh, media world and also uh, I negotiated dozens of contracts, but now I am doing my own content. So uh, you can find me at littlemissjacob.com. I actually made the website on the way over here on the airplane. Oh, cool. And uh, and finally, we have the same birthday, by the way, March 9th. Really? So, yeah, that's oh, kind of wow, cool, cool, right? That's a good birthday. Yeah. It is the peak of Pisces. Really? Yeah, so if you're into astrology, that means something, I guess. I love that. There well, you go. I, yeah, good vibes, because we have the same birthday. <laughs> right on. So, happy belated birthday, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it was a month ago. <laughs> Still, well, I, look, I haven't seen you in like six months, so or maybe a year. Uh, yeah, I'm a YouTuber. Uh, I have a channel, Actual Justice Warrior. I cover like legal issues, mostly criminal issues, but... I got interested in this particular thing based on, you know, what's going on behind the scenes in different media companies and whatnot. Uh, you can basically find me there or on my website, actualjusticewarrior.com. All the links and all that, th it's easy to find. But I'm looking forward to getting into this topic. Yeah, I think what's, what's I'm not so much interested in the, the, the minutia of Steven Crowder's daily life and, you know, his, his arguments, but outside of this, you've got this alleged extortion scheme where... Jared uh, Monroe, his f former employee, is claiming he's being legally abused. Crowder says that he teamed up with his ex-wife and they're going after him. But there's like a, bi a bigger picture here in terms of we've got the Taylor Lorenz story. They're sneaky, underhanded. I mean, that sounds downright like intentionally well, anti-competitive. Yeah. You then have what appears to be a business dispute between Crowder and a former employee where the former employee, I don't know, maybe I'm biased, but this is what I see teams up with the guy's ex-wife, there's no reason for a former employee to make contact with a guy's ex-wife when he's in a business dispute with him. I think any lawyer would be like, yeah, don't do that because it looks really bad. And then, of course, later on, we can probably talk about Daily Wire, Candace Owens, Ben Shapiro. There's been a lot of drama around there. But let's 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 start, I suppose, with what happened with uh, Stephen Crowder. Do you does that, I, I, either one of you want to intro the the Go drama ahead. around this oh, you want me to do it yeah uh so i a couple maybe a week ago a week and a half ago jared monroe drops a video where he says that he had all these problems with steven crowder um and during the course of that video he he cites legal abuse he says that he was served a cease and desist and a rule 202 petition dating back to october and this was a time period where different news articles were dropping about steven crowder that quoted anonymous sources so like you know the timeline kind of makes sense for that and then he also claimed, and this is like one of the things that I'm interested in, 
is that Steven basically forced him in or strongly coerced him into signing a non-disparagement agreement based on the idea that he was going to take his social media account, his Twitter account, and that he wanted a carve out to work at another third company after he left Crowder because of a non-solicitation clause. And supposedly, again, we don't have the documentation from Jared to be 100% fair. He was then blackballed later from that very company. So he ended up out of media for about two years. And then over time, like, you know, he's, you know, it's like been building up kind of thing. And this was his like opportunity to strike back at Crowder, which, you know, is a time where he is vulnerable. So he was raising money to pay off his previous legal bills. Plus, he said file a counter motion, but fight the presumed lawsuit that he was going to get in and try to get out of his NDA. Oh man, I'm 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 just right off the bat disgusted by that. He's but, in a he's in a business dispute so he he starts he teams up with the guy's wife who he's currently in divorce proceedings with. And I well, I mean th- th- that's alleged by the Crowder team. Like we do have some messages from him to the wife. But like the team up, like I did a thing where I broke down all of the uh, screenshots that they showed. There's like a lot that is on the page that they didn't read to you. And there's also a lot of missing context there. And I I would just say, like Crowder's wife, who unfortunately we have to talk about to a certain extent, but I I agree with you. I don't want to get into his personal divorce. They were she was involved in the company. From what everybody says, Crowder runs a family business. Jared didn't have a problem with her, but assuming he had a problem with Steven, which obvious, like, why would he be filing a complaint unless he had a problem with them, but got along with her, him reaching out to her after he finds out that she got a divorce is like a normal like thing just to say, hey, how are you doing and all that. But like this like grand Hillary conspiracy, I, I, I do not think they have sufficiently proven that. So. I think it's important to like understand what Jared said in his video because to be honest, I had just done some research about the whole Daily Wire and um, Steven Crowder thing. I wasn't really, I was just interested in it based on the fact that Candace left Daily Wire and all this stuff. So I'm like, maybe people need to understand kind of how these deals work. I mean, there's a famous uh, spat that happened with uh, Dave Portnoy and Alex Cooper when she left, they basically found her built up her podcast and then uh, the girls decide, you know, went to LA and talked to Logan Paul and they're all saying, oh, you got a really bad deal. Um, was it a bad deal? They're getting paid like a hundred grand uh, a year plus some bonuses. I think they ended up making like 500 grand a year. But so, you know, there's been things like this have happened in the past where uh, a talent feels like, you know, they've grown with the company and they, they're not getting compensated. So that's how I got interested in it. Th- this is why there are quote unquote bad deals. And I, I don't know if there's any way to actually navigate this, right? So I don't I don't know too much about the David Portnoy podcast deal. What would you say the woman's name was? Uh, her name's Alex Cooper. Yeah, Alex Cooper. And, but you know, she had four episodes done. She had like 12,000 downloads, I think. And then when it got to Barstool, then it was 2 million downloads. So yeah. arguably, if she never went- It was a great went, deal. Yeah, it was a great deal. So, so that's the issue, right? Someone like Portnoy or anyone at Barstool sees a podcast that's not really that big and they say, we're going to pay you a hundred grand, which a guaranteed loss for Barstool and Portnoy. Like I, we, we work here, we make podcasts, we do this. I guarantee you 12,000 downloads. It, he's just, he's just basically saying, I will write you a Making check a and bet. give you my money. Mm-hmm. Then she succeeds, his bet paid off. And then they immediately go, I have a bad deal and I'm leaving. That's yeah. not right. I, so that's kind of why I was interested in it. And then to be honest, I I was kind of like, oh, I don't know how I feel about, you know, Crowder releasing the deal points and all this stuff. And, you know, and at first I'm like, maybe that was done in bad form, whatever. I didn't know the background of the whole situation. And I think I had seen the leak tape of Crowder, the rumble, or sorry, the, um, the ring cam footage. But I did think it was weird that Yashar Ali leaked that footage. Do you know who Yashar Ali oh, is? Of course. So right. you, like, I don't think a lot of people know who that he is, but he worked for the Hillary campaign. Then he uh, worked for um, uh, Newsom. Then he, I guess, slept on uh, Kathy Griffin's couch and was evicted. And then he owes uh, the Getty family heir like $200,000. So, I mean, this is I, like I, a serial I, grifter. Well, I don't see how you could ignore that. Like clearly, Hillary gave the footage to him. I mean, that's the that's the the, the logical well, assumption. I'm in the in the court documents. It, the family has admitted to giving the footage to the journalist, like so the, Yas, you, like Ali, and what, Hillary has denied it, like in at least in testimony. 
So, so wait, wait, the family has has admitted it. Yeah, the, and I'm I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure the Hillary clan has admitted to turning over the footage to the uh, so to the reporter. When you when you take a look at the statements that were released in the Crowder versus Monroe lawsuit, that they're trying to damage him publicly to force him into unfavorable divorce terms. And then you find out that they leaked footage to a a far left media personality who, of course, is going to attack Crowder. And then you've got Jared meeting up with them. You've got him in, in, in statements saying when we when we team up, it's his worst nightmare, saying things like we don't want him. He, I, I don't want him near his kids. I think it's fairly obvious that Crowder's right on this. They, yeah. they're, 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 they're using a PR strategy yes. to win a divorce settlement. See, Here, here's like, what that, people don't understand. That, I was just going to say, okay. see, I actually like went through all of these documents and these statements where supposedly they're doing that. And what's interesting about the email, the first thing that they showed, or actually the second email that they showed, which I actually printed up old school right here, is that if you read it, it's actually Hillary's father, uh, what you call it, crowdfunding. I'm not crowdfunding. Sorry. I don't know why I freaking... Jared's crowdfunding. It's Hillary's father summarizing what the lawyer told him. Like, if you actually read at the top, not just the highlighted portions of it. So, like, there, he's breaking down the seven points from the lawyer right there. And at the bottom of that, what they're doing, which is not read by by Gerald. In fact, Gerald weirdly says they never talk about the kids. It says that they like Hillary's plan of like going with a public co-parenting narrative for Stephen to try to settle the divorce quickly. So. Like, so are you saying the dad was going behind Hillary's back? No, no, that's an e that's what they showed on Louder with Crowder, right? Right. But they highlighted certain portions of it. I just like zoomed in and printed it out, and it's just the father summarizing what the lawyer told him. So like people are like, oh, this is Hillary's family's plan. That's literally like just read the email at but, the but, top. But, 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 but so what? Well, if you meet with a divorce lawyer and they tell you, hey, here's how this normally goes. And then you summarize the points and then somebody highlights a line or two lines from there that make you look the absolute worst and allege a conspiracy that's not backed up but by reality. I also think that it's important for people to understand. And I know this because it was offered to me when uh, Taylor Lorenz wrote the article about me is that you can hire a law firm. And mo this happens, I think, I, I'm guessing mainly in Hollywood, but I'm sure it happens left, right wing, whoever it is. You can hire a law firm and they will actually hire sort of their internal PR crisis people. And those people can either launch a media campaign to help you kind of unravel something that you, you know, you stick your foot in something and they help you unwind it, or they can start a PR campaign uh, in order to put pressure on whoever, you know, they work in side by side with the lawyers. And what's interesting is that they charge about 20 grand a month and they also are, hired by the law firm so that you actually are paying the law firm the 20 grand a month and they pay the PR people. And guess what? The PR people, because they work for the law firm, they're under the same sort of, um, what is it called? Attorney client privilege as, so yep. that is very interesting because if you're, if you're paying for those people, which I don't know if they were or not, but it is very possible. Now, Brian Friedman is UTA's lawyer. So U United Talent Agency is the talent agency that represents Taylor Lorenz. And I believe that they were working together. I actually know a lot of people don't know this, but I sued UTA as well. And Brian Friedman. They suck. Yeah. You, Brian Friedman <laughs> represented UTA. And it's very weird because Taylor Lorenz was tweeting about me negatively. And when I had already filed the lawsuit about UTA, guess who is um, retweeting Taylor? Yashar Ali about me. Mm. And I'm like, what does this guy know about me? <laughs> like, why is he getting involved in this? And so while I agree that you don't want to do guilt by association, you also have to recognize that this is a playbook a lot of times. But 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 I feel like you're kind of being obtuse on this. This is this is him saying we're being advised by a lawyer. Yeah. Then we know they sent footage to Yasher Ali. They, so so let's let's break this down for you know I don't want to be super esoteric here, uh, or or like try to make it is yeah. Anyway, videos. Uh, of the ring footage, according to Crowder's lawsuit, all the footage has been deleted in violation of uh, uh, court orders or something to that effect. According to Crowder's complaint. According to Crowder's complaint, for his, sure. His company complaint, because remember, right. his company is also additionally suing his wife, right. her father, I think, I think her the, best friend, and I her wife. And, I think, and I think the likelihood that Crowder would f would f make uh, present a false statement to the court is, is zero. Having been involved in lawsuits like this, you, you don't do it. Your, your opinions... Maybe uh, are obviously 
like I th throw this out the window when I'm reading these court documents. Someone will say something like, it's at this point that the, the defendant made disparaging comments about me. It's like, OK, well, you know, whether they did or didn't, we don't know for sure. But the likelihood that he would s submit to a court to a judge, they did false statement to fact is, is I do. I don't believe that. I, in, in the initial civil complaint, there's always like weird stuff in there that like turns out to not be true. Like, so I sure like, I, I, I would think if if she was ordered by the divorce court to preserve evidence and then she did not do that then you would think that there would be some admonishment by no, a judge. Wrong, no way. I, I, the, dude, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm a little frustrated on this one because I've been involved in these lawsuits. The judges don't admonish. Judges will admonish you if you're, if like people who are in the, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to speak specifically to Crowder or Hillary's, I don't know, but having been involved in this stuff, the judges look to the person with money, power, and no time, and they say, I can squeeze you out and put an end to this. The judges do that. Because the judges don't want to be involved in these things. And the people who are outside of these court proceedings seem to think that a judge is, is this impartial guy or lady who's like, let me get to the bottom of this and find justice. No, the judges, because I've been involved in a bunch of these, both personally and as uh, like through stories, but also through people I know, the judges are like, how do I make this case go away? What do I have to do? And so when you end up with uh, an, an employee who files a lawsuit, the employee says, I have no money. I have nothing but time. I can do anything I want. And the judge can't do anything to me. And the judge knows the guy who runs the company loses tens of thousands of dollars every hour he spends dealing with this. So I can end this lawsuit, get this paperwork thrown in the trash so long as I pressure the CEO and not the employee. So in that capacity, I do not believe it would be likely that Crowder's company would submit a false statement to the court. Right. In that, in, in, in that capacity. Now, it may be exaggerated, perhaps something. Maybe she accidentally deleted the footage. Maybe she just, uh, uh, like, it was on a cycle to be deleted and she didn't preserve it. I don't know what the yeah. exaggeration might it's be. It's a big no-no in court, like, yeah. generally to delete but, but stuff. I got, I got to tell you, having covered uh, many of these stories and, and my personal bias, having been involved in, like, three of them, it is insane that people think these courts want anything to do with justice and accountability. But we do have other documents of other like issues that the judge has had. And Alex Jones, remember, had discovery, uh, supposedly discovery issues. And the judge, like, that's a big thing. So you would expect some kind of record or at least the order to preserve. Like, you could insert that in there. Like, one of the problems I have with, again, the Louder with Crowder company complaint, because it's a separate lawsuit, like, I need to keep emphasizing that, is that they... First of all, Gerald in his video cites court documents, but it's him alleging it in court. Like just because I write something down and submit it to a court doesn't mean I'm not sourcing myself. But then on top of that, they're not quote they're quoting very selectively from these various different portions of the of the uh, what you call of the court when they have access to that documentation. So in order to preserve that, you know, in order to preserve and then something to show that she violated that. Totally fine. Like, but, I'm not but, an expert on how ring footage pause. works. Here, here's, the, here's, here's the issue. I'm, uh, we got to start from the beginning because the issue I'm having yeah, with your argument is we know they gave the footage to Yashir Ali, a leftist, which is absolutely going to be pu pu uh, publicity <clears throat> damage to Crowder. For sure. And there are statements where they're like PR campaign, hiring a PR guy, the lawyers advising them, the longer this goes on, the worse it gets. There's statements, whether they're, they're snippets or not, where they're saying... Uh, where Hillary says, I wouldn't get as much in court, but I want more than that. Yeah, but how, in that, how, but how, that particular statement is another one that's completely like if you read it in its full context, they're arguing about the custody. So uh -huh. she turned down more money than she would get in court. But like the issue was and it's highlighted in the messages that she they're arguing about who gets the kids when and all of that. So but that doesn't matter. My well, point. no, it does matter. No, because my point Stephen, is you the, said it these, does matter. You said that these these statements from the lawyer. Yeah, this is a summary from the lawyer that they're taking as advice, a grand conspiracy. They, they're, they're paying a lawyer for advice. The yeah. idea that they wouldn't take their lawyer's advice they paid for is nobody. Nobody said that they wouldn't. But and then like, they did. So but if you're like, what are you this, arguing? If you go to a lawyer and then the lawyer meets with you, which, by the way, Hillary's father should not have been with the lawyer because this would have been attorney client for if it was just with the wife. And she wrote this down because it's the advice between her and her lawyer. But if you go to a lawyer and they say, hey, here's how this normally works, especially in a high profile divorce case, and they give you seven points, then you put that in your group message, like whatever message uh, messaging system this was to summarize for your family. And then you have somebody who very opportunistically in order to deflect from the Jared issue, which we're not like talking on, highlights select portions you, on we're, screen. We're, we, we got a hole here. They did it. 
It's a fact. They did. They did no, 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 release they, the video. I, I'm yeah, not. They they did engage in a, in a damaging PR campaign against Crowder. Fact. Yeah. Af- okay. After Crowder talked about the divorce on the air, right. They then released the video. Like that can, did happen. Can we back up for a sec? Because I didn't change my so like I got my stance on this just from watching Jared's video. So initially. I watched it and I'm like, oh, this guy, you know, Crowder's getting basically karma for throwing out the Daily Wire contract and, you know, whatever. And I moved on with my day. And then I, somebody posted about Brian Friedman being involved, Yashar Ali, and, you, you know, all these people repped by ETA. And I'm like, maybe I'll take a second look. And I watched the video again. You really need to understand the timeline that Jared describes. So if you're mad at him for getting um, Crowder for blackballing, all these, I think you just need to understand what he says. So the first thing I noticed is that he talks about, uh, so he says, I think he was let go, for, or sorry, he uh, resigns from Dale, uh, from Crowder in 2018. And he he says that he signed a NDA with a non-solicitation clause when he started work, which is pretty typical, okay? Non-solicitation is not a non-compete. A non-solicitation is just, you can't go and poach my clients, my advertisers, people, you know, you you just can't uh, steal basically company property and whatever. But the way Jared describes it in the video is he says it's a uh, non-solicitation at first, and then he goes, well, it felt like the strictest non-compete. And then he goes, and then the non-compete in quotes. And so well, he, he said he said that they argued it would be interpreted as the. Sh- I, I, need, I need to clarify one thing real quick too. You said Crowder spoke about the divorce first, and then they released the footage. Yeah, the footage. No, came I out believe afterwards. I believe Crow- didn't Crowder say? I could be wrong, but didn't Crowder say he addressed the divorce because he was asked for comment on the video that had already been released to the journalist? No, no, he he did that video. If you remember, people were like weirding out about it, but I'm like, if he can't doesn't want to talk about it, it's fine. Where he said uh, that his only mistake was picking the wrong person. That video came out before the ring footage. Right. And, and then my I understanding think there was, was an additional comment after The reason that. why he addressed it before the footage was released was because a journalist contacted him saying, can you comment on this footage? And he went, oh, crap. They released the footage. I better get in front of this. Uh, if he said that, I don't, I'm not I thought that. I could be wrong, but I thought the case was Crowder said, I have no choice but to address this because I, journalists uh, are asking I, about I, it. I remember I, I that had, too. I'm not sure I, I thought the implication that that he had made to in his defense was that Candace Owens was kind of like dancing around the issue in public, like, you mm. know, and that's what made him address it. And then in response, they released the footage. But like, that's the timeline I remember. But I, I didn't like point by point. OK, yeah, I, I don't know one. for sure. But anyway, so like so I guess Jared is saying this stuff. And, and then another thing that stood out to me from the video is he's like, you know, I'm being forced. OK, wait, let me back up. Sorry. So he starts working for Crowder. Uh, signs an NDA with a non-solicitation. Then he he wants to leave. He resigns. And then I'm guessing that Crowder reminded him, well, you have a non-solicitation clause. And so he says, basically, that would make it so that I couldn't work anywhere. Well, Crowder gives him a carve out, which basically means, you know, I understand you want to go work for, let's say, said media company. So I'm going to carve that media company out. You can go ahead and work for them. But in order to give you something you want, I want you to sign this NDA. And so uh, Jared hires an attorney. The attorney negotiates that deal, gives him the carve out, and he goes on his way to the next job. Then Jared says in the video that he was fired unlawfully from this next job, which is also kind of like, Jared, do you have a problem everywhere you go? Maybe but you not, should But not randomly. Yeah, if, he did, if you smell crap everywhere, check but, it But, but not wait, wait, randomly. Just, he did say that it was it was Steven who got him fired from no, the no, other job. But no, he didn't get him fired. This is what happened. Well, I didn't say he did. I just said if that's what Jared he said. Jared was breaching the the non-solicitation clause which can mean a lot of people are taking it as well he was talking crap about um crowder and that's why crowder got mad no maybe he was poaching talent maybe he was poaching advertisers we don't know what led to it so he sends uh let's say crowder did send an uh a cease and desist um then whatever the new employer could be liable for tortuous interference if he sees uh jared breaking the contract he signed you and, get what and I'm I'll, saying? I'll give you a quick example of what i think maybe the most likely is that uh and this is wild speculation jared works for crowder jared gets a bunch of phone numbers That's jared then think. leaves crowder has those phone numbers and then starts reaching out to people being like oh i know someone who can do this then crowder goes is he texting our clients or, mm-hmm. or insert whatever he's using the net the, our rolodex for a different company that company fires him because they're like hey 
this is going to put us in legal liability yes. for basically stealing information from a yes. rival company. We can't do that. You can't do that. And you have an agreement. You can't do that. I don't know exactly what happened. I'm saying that that but seems it's, plausible. It's, it's very plausible. So so he gets he says he gets fired unlawfully. So that's in 2018. Now, in his video, he say, I'm getting legally abused by Crowder. This has been going on. He doesn't say it implicitly. As a, he's, he's basically, or he doesn't say it outright. He basically is saying, I've been abused for a long time. But the reality is that from the point that he gets fired from the job to, so 2018 to 20, October of 2023, nothing is happening legally between him and Crowder. Now, you have to look at the timeline. So the, the ring cam footage gets released end of uh, April 2023. Then in May, there's uh, bad articles. June, July, August, there's all these bad articles. And then in October, Crowder files this petition to, I'm guessing, hey, somebody's leaking all this stuff. We need to find out who's doing this because this is causing problems, right? So they file this 202 petition, which basically... Um, it means that you have to, the, the judge is going to let you get information, deposition, text messages, and whatnot in order to see if there is reason to bring a lawsuit. Now, this is what's very interesting because in the in the video where Jared's asking for money, he's basically saying that he had to pay for litigation and he, he owes all this money because he had to pay. He didn't start the litigation. What he did is he argued that he didn't want to give up discovery. So in that thing, where Jer um, Crowder's asking for a deposition and text messages and all that, which is, by the way, normal in a lawsuit. Both sides have to give it up. So right. whether you're the plaintiff or the defendant. And the way that Jared's saying it is like, this is going to be a abuse of my, um, what is it called? My my privacy and I'm well, going to get interrogated for... But, yeah. but when I filed the lawsuit against Taylor yeah. Lorenz, I had to give up all my text messages yeah. that say Taylor Lorenz. I mean, that's it feels very intrusive, yes. But I wanted justice, right? I also haven't been speaking. Have I been on podcasts? No, because anything I say, the New York Times would be like, well, Ari's hanging out with Tim Pool. She ruined her own reputation. You know what I mean? That's oh, yeah. They could say whatever. So it's very, it's as a content creator, it's not very fun to be in a lawsuit and it can definitely damage your career. But I'm the way he described it is just the legal process. Anyway, why was he fighting? Why was he fighting the deposition? If you have, if you're broke, why are you going to fight to give up your text messages and have a deposition? I mean, the likelihood of Crowder actually filing that lawsuit, most people don't want to file a lawsuit against someone that has no money. What I think happened is that Crowder wanted to get the discovery so he could see if other people were messing with it. People like his competitors. Because when you get, right. when you get yeah. that discovery, you can use it then to file another lawsuit against your competitors, May your ex-wife, or whoever. Pr probably probably uh, the divorce. Yeah. He wanted to see what Jared was saying to his ex-wife, or current wife. Well, and Jeremy divorced. Boring he, was he on would, the list. He would, have, right. he would have that. I think it's for potential other lawsuits, because if you look at the other people, because he has messages. For, he cloned Hillary's phone twice in the divorce. So he has messages from her to Jared. That's probably why he sent Jared this notice. And I do agree with you. Like it is the legal process. It is intrusive, but it definitely is the legal process and that you get this information. Then, then but Hillary's he wants father or yeah, well, ancillary people he doesn't have access to. He wants the Dave Land like it's on the list. It's like Dave Landau, Jeremy Boring. Like there's you know fourteen names, and then the fifteenth one is unnamed, unlimited, un unnamed persons otherwise or whatever. So I, I just love this. There's like the Daily Wire Crowder secret backstage war has been going on for a long time. Candace Owens was it was talking about the divorce and now Daily Wire and Candace is like, wow, look at this. Well, it's a very Crazy niche industry, right? And the other thing I thought about with Jared is like, how many people would love to, you know, be on a show ever, and get paid a salary to do? I mean, a lot of people are want to be YouTubers or, and you're not guaranteed a job in this industry. You're just not. And so if you go around reaching your contracts or being a liability, it's understandable why somebody might not want to hire you. Um, and so it's it's weird to me that Jared is saying he couldn't work basically for six years or whatever um, because he was in this, I mean, the, the non-circumvent thing or the non-solicitation was two years. So what's he been doing this whole time? Well, he, he said the non-compete was two years. The non-solicitation was there in was the original. There was no non-compete. <laughs> he said the non-solicitation was in the original agreement. And then like th that was interpreted as a non-compete. But then he wanted an exemption for one unnamed so, company. I, I just I want to add to like but, he, uh, he's under a non-disparagement right. and a non-disclosure, which he violated both of with his GoFundMe. Yeah. yeah. I mean. So now what's happening, I guess, is that 
for some reason, all these lawyers don't want that discovery to come out. So now they've filed, a, you know, even though Jared said in his video that he was going to file a counter motion against uh, Crowder, which I thought was weird because I'm like, I thought you didn't want to give up discovery. If you file something against Crowder, you're going to have to give it. But no, he doesn't want it. He's not going to have to give up discovery if this uh, thing that they filed with an administrative agency goes through, which is basically um, going to be a thing where they say, is this NDA? Uh, valid or not. And I talked to an attorney and she said, in a, in a way, it's kind of like a race for who's first. So if the administration's agency says the NDA is void before the tortious interference lawsuit moves forward, um, then he could get out of that because they could say it, it's a breach. But you have to realize that these attorneys and the um, the way the media works, they, they will blow something up to make it sound so crazy. When uh, Taylor wrote the article about me, she included this one thing saying that I didn't have a talent. I was representing talent without a talent agency license. Now, it sounds like, oh, my gosh, you know, I can't believe that. Well, a talent agency license, in, it really only matters if you are an agent in L.A., but you have to file, you have to pay 500 bucks, you fill in some paperwork, and then you get the license. It's not, you know what I mean? They're not like putting you through some rigorous thing to find out if you're, you know, OK to be an agent. It, it's is so but the way it sounds to people that don't understand it is like oh she's violating and i did have a talent agency license by the way but, but she lied yeah oh she lied a lot <laughs> she lied a lot i i i, I think Shocking. i think she has cognitive deficiencies i'm trying to be very academic in how i approach that but like the double masking and dancing and like oh, I, I feel I feel like she's not she well. Self she self-owned herself so hard that it was actually hard for me to fundraise. By the time that we were able to like go through, I think people were just like, oh, we, we kind of hate her, but she's such a clown that, you know, she's taken herself down mm. and which is, fi you know, which is fine. I mean, I think that I'm so happy that I learned sort of the ins and outs of of that world because I was not I was so naive to everything. And really, that's why I came out in defense of, I guess. People think I'm, you know, shilling for, for Crowder or whatever. I don't even know Crowder. I never watch his content. But you can't say that you're against Taylor Lorenz and the type of antics that she does and the people like her do. And then you notice something and then sit back and say, well, she's doing it to Crowder. Or these people are doing it to Crowder, so it's okay. I don't think so. so. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm biased. Very biased. Very, very biased. Uh, having dealt with, the, with these things, having people come out of the war, woodwork to stab you in the back. What I can say that I know is that based on how I, I can't speak for Texas, but I can speak certainly for a handful of East Coast states and some in the Midwest. Right now, the way like Jared just violated his non-disparagement and not NDA and raised ninety two thousand dollars. I do not believe he will face any serious admonishment from the court. Crowder can do nothing in kind. So you had, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they put out a statement, but it wasn't Crowder. Crowder's not on the show at the time. And St if Steven Crowder comes out and says any word about this, the judge will flog him publicly because th th this, is, this is what I've experienced. The Crowder is in a position where you throw a paperclip into the, into the spokes and you can cause hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. They can do nothing to Jared. The court can be like, we told you not to do that. And, and likely what will happen is the court will say, Jared, please don't do that again. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. And Crowder's lawyers are going to be like, this is in absurd. Your Honor, are you are you joking? This man's clearly in violation. They'll say, well, look, the goal of the court here is to try and figure this out and end this, not to prolong the bickering. But if Crowder do something, the judge is going to be like, you knew what you did. I mean, but he is doing something. He is suing him for a million dollars. We know Jared doesn't Suing's have allowed. that money. I, I'm saying, I didn't say that was not allowed. Right, my, my point but is, like you, you brought up the is, statement. So like my main no, issue. No, 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 hold on. I'm not. He's not doing something. My my what doing something was there is Jared is in violation of an agreement he made publicly to raise money. OK, you can't do that. Well, it, but he's not going to. So that's what I mean by doing something. Crowder can't do something in kind. Certainly Crowder can file lawsuits and then cross his finger fingers and hope the judge actually does something about it. Yep. But, but what I'm saying is, in these court cases, what I have found, and not just the ones I've been involved in, the people who are, uh, the people with no money can break the rules, bend the rules, because the courts have little leverage over them. They mm -hmm. can do very little. They can go to the CEO of a company, and they can say, we are going to fine you whatever amount of money per day that will cost you, ca cause you to stop doing what you are doing. You go to someone like Jared, and he's going to be like, I don't have any money. And they're going to say, then please just stop doing it. So th this, this is the issue. Yeah. Yep. Again, but like, 
here's the thing. They they issue their statement. First of all, the non-disparagement would be between him and the company. So Gerald reaching a state making a statement is like his public like response to that. It's supposed to be a not uh, a mutual non-disparagement agreement, by the way. So like if we find out through the course of the case that they were also violating it, like telling his other employer something damaging about him in order to get him fired, then like that might be grounds for them to get out of the NDA. Like one of the reasons they filed the complaint with the National Labor Relations Board is that they're trying to get the NDA resolved. But like my main issue, and I would probably be way closer to you on this particular thing, is the fact that they didn't address the key points on it. Like, I'm not the guy, Stephen Crowder's the guy, with Gerald, who came into this studio and complained about the Daily Wire seizing a social media account. They were accused of that by Jared. That was something that they said that he Which, was doing, that they were taking they were trying to take his Twitter. And that's one of the things they okay, were leveraging now, now against him. Hold no, on. No, no, hold on. No, but they, I, they I don't address that. that but they don't address, address the, that. the point you just made before we move on? But they didn't address that. So can Crowder publicly speak to this lawsuit based on what I was just talking about? The answer is no. No, he, he, he has signed a mutual so NDA. Jared is in violation of his agreement and Crowder can do nothing. Mm -hmm. You said in your video, you're like, why isn't he turning in the cease and desist? Because the cease and desist wasn't filed with the court. So if he has an NDA with Jared, then that would be a breach of his NDA. That They're only talking about the court documents that were filed is what I'm guessing. But the, from what I understand, the mutual NDA is, is about them not speaking bad about louder with Crowder, the company or Steven or related entities. And the company has a mutual one about him. So the CEO re releasing a statement like in that, in so, your interpretation, you're Jared, to talk so when about Jared the says, that you filed. Yeah, so, they wanted to seize my social media account, he could be lying. Yes. And mm -hmm. Crowder can't say anything. But the company could in their response no, to it. No. Yes, they could. No. L listen, that I, I, again, I'm going to stress this as much as I can. I'm very biased having been involved in this. If I were in Crowder's position, having actively been involved as friends and, and, and personally have, having filed lawsuits and been sued, if this happened to me, and I remember sitting in these meetings, with the judge, and I said, I went out publicly and, and my company issued the statement. The judge would be like, I am now going to fine you $10,000 every day until you take that post down and issue a public apology. And my lawyer's screaming in my face. The, 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 the phone calls I've been involved in where I'm yelling at a team of lawyers being like, how are they getting away with this? Yeah. And he's like, because they don't have money. And I said, then why can't we respond? And he goes, because the judge will fine you $10,000 every time you do. Except he well, does address some of the allegations in his video. And like, so you're like, oh, this non, this so, this non disparagement, what you're saying makes no sense. This non disparagement covers his ability to address allegations one and two, but not three and four, but also he could address five Steven because Crowder they address a... various portions of it. And again, I'm talking about louder with Crowder, the company, because they released a statement in response to this, but they didn't address that and they didn't address whether or not they blackballed them. It's a simple denial if you're going to deny mm -hmm. it. So, I uh, fair, especially fair, fair point, if your point. company I, is, it's, you went on this whole screed against Daily Wire about how your creators first, you're against specifically full ownership of social media companies, including the ones you built, which is something that Crowder said in his video. He said it here on this show, like a basic denial of that. Like that's the thing that I'm interested in. This whole thing with the divorce. But like I agree with you guys, I'm not in that interested. I, I agree, fair point, absolutely. But do you agree that some of this has to play out in court? Like you can't just make allegations unless they're already filed. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like that would put them, it would be a li liability for, for Louder with Crowder. I think they can only talk about what's been filed in the lawsuit. At least when I sued Taylor, it was like, I was, you know, I was advised to only talk about the things that were already publicly filed. Yeah, you're, advi you're advised but, to say nothing. I 100% yeah, agree with I that. Yeah, I know. Like, I've period. probably like, been better to just say even, nothing. Even about anything filed, you're advised to say nothing in any kind of litigation. Mm -hmm. Like, that's 100% true. Here's here's interesting thing, and why I'm probably also biased is because, so I had this talent agency. I was bootstrapped. I didn't have a lot of money, but there was a point where TikTok people made, were making a lot of money because um, during the pandemic, there was no you know, music touring in Hollywood, there was no making movies or television. So I basically had a monopoly on these people that were going to be very, very successful. And the talent agents saw that I had that. And they basically came to me and they're like, okay, Ari, you've found all these people, you developed them, you know, I've spent my own money to do this. And uh, so now I have, let's say I had 85 clients. We're going to come in, we're UTA, we're the best, you know, we're, we're going to come in and you have them sign for 20%. Okay, cool. Um, we're going to do, we'll do a deal with you. We'll take 
you can take 10%. And by the way, we don't want you to like deal, we don't want you to talk to L'Oreal or like Chipotle. We'll, we'll take all those incoming deals for you. And I was like, well, no, I mean, thank you, but no, thank you. I'm like, I, I already kind of did the work. And so I'm going to go ahead. And, but if you guys want to bring a deal, if you want to go out and be, you know, the, the hunters and go hunt a deal, I'll give you the 10%. And because I denied working with them, you know, the, the 10%, then all of a sudden they take me down. And what did they do? This is what I think they did. Because at first I was mad at the, you know, the influencers and I call them kids, but they were over 18. I think they... You know, they, it's kind of like a Jared situation. They call you up and they're like, oh my gosh, you're in a terrible deal. I mean, this woman, Ari, she's the worst. And did you know she doesn't even have a talent agency license? Well, I did, but you know what I'm saying? And they're like, so, and then they explain to these 18 year olds how the law works. And I have these, you know, these teenagers yelling at me being like, did you know that if you don't, you don't have a talent agency license, so all your documents are invalid? And I'm like, are you an attorney? You know, so they're basically manipulating the people at the top, these people, let's say it's UTA, I don't know for sure. They're manipulating these people to, because, you know, they're like emboldening them. Oh, you know, you don't need Ari. We could take you here. So I don't know if that happened, but I think it's it's possible. It, it, at least it happened in my situation. Um, uh, but I'm not like, I'm not sure how they're comparable because you had like legitimate talent and like UTA, like it is a conflict of interest. You have these attorneys and journalists that are represented by a talent agency that wants to poach your client, so My they're doing is, all these do, hit pieces. They'll do whatever to but like take Jared, you out. Jared, like let's let's be honest, he was not this like you know fantastic talent that they were trying to poach. He hasn't been in the he hasn't been in no, content no, for like six him, years. They used him to get what they wanted, which was to destroy his reputation, hurt his divorce proceedings. That's what my my opinion is about the matter. I mean, yeah. The, the, what about the portions of the emails where they basically say a PR campaign against Crowder could pressure him into getting like effectively paraphrasing, we can win if we launch a PR campaign. I mean, when you're suing a media figure, like there is a chance that this goes out into the public and you should have a PR strategy. Like, but I mean, yeah. there's a difference between it may get out into the public and we want to intentionally drive this to the public sphere to damage his reputation. Look, I, and, 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 a and, lot of those messages are from Hillary's father. And like, you know, like they're like, I'm not saying he acted appropriately in that, be, but he is the father. Like you would right. expect a relative to to okay, okay, be but, on the side of the person. So it's like messages from him saying like, I want to have people it. that are sympathetic to me, which I, you know, I have that full message too. And like, you know, and even in there, they add the caveat that it's like, I don't think the terms are unreasonable in, in that message. But yeah, like, I don't like this. I don't but like the nasty divorce, but like the there's, there's two separate issues that were kind of like merged. Like, I think the strategy of Gerald, the CEO is to like, you know, start a fire in a corner, but then fart in the other corner. So you smell the fart and don't notice the fire because like a lot of this has nothing to do with the original issues or what even interested me in like Jared's story. Like, I want to know about the non-compete. Like I hear a lot that this is common in the industry, but it's actually not that common in niche so industries then, like media. So then let's just put to bed that it is reasonable to believe that the, the, the divorce proceedings were, were weaponized publicly against Crowder. Jared's involved in that. And once we can agree, there's no reason. To, I, don't, I don't understand. But invo involved why are you in, defending involved him? In, involved in what way? That he doesn't want so, Stephen to have his kids after he accused no, him okay, of Okay, call, call, slow down. So uh, the Hillary camp uh, is saying, let's damage him publicly. Then there's communications with Jared where they're like, hey, we're teaming up. Well, that, Jared's there, saying if, that he if, wants if to If you're team saying up. we shouldn't conflate those things, I agree. Let's accept that on that side, the divorce proceedings are being weaponized. Uh, but are, are be I, I don't even know that's the case from the little isolated pieces of messages that they put forward and what do you, what do you, what do you the allegations the from their Yashir complaints. Ali. Yeah, the family did that. They said that they did that in response to Crowder talking doesn't about the It doesn't matter divorce. what they did it for. It happened. Yeah. Okay. They have emails saying PR campaign. Okay. Then they say, yes, we sent the footage to an opposition journalist who, who will attack Stephen Crowder. I don't know why you're defending that or are, why are we arguing it happened. I, I understand that that happened. That okay, they, now now we can agree that happened. They but did that's, it. But that's not Jared can, sending the footage to I didn't them. say that. I'm but saying, you're saying you're, why don't you saying, just accept that based on this message. Because you keep defending about, the family even though we're trying to talk about Jared and then you say you want to stop you want to stop combining well, no, the, these the, things. Divorce is I mean look, divorce is nasty and people act nasty in the divorce. What I want to know with the Jared issue is I actually want to hear his side of the story. We don't have his full side. So my point is. And for the divorce, we're getting excerpts from the Crowder side, who, again, if they're if you're accused of engaging in lawfare against somebody 
And you're also suing with the company, your ex-wife and her friend and her parents. Like that does not lend and her attorney that does not lend to your argument. So my point is, I feel like you're being obtuse in trying to come up with reasons to defend the divorce issue when we could just agree. We know they sent the footage. We know they wanted a PR campaign. End of story. Now let's talk about what Jared is doing. Yeah, I'm not again. Well, the reason that I'm in a disagreement with you is because that like worst case scenario, they're both doing this to each other in the public. I think the lawsuit from the company against Hillary's family and her on top of the divorce for a million dollars is very unusual. Like and like nobody's pointing that out. What that do you they're, mean? That louder with Crowder, the company is suing Hillary, her family. Well, because they're messing with his business. I mean, the, the only way that you can find well, no, out. they First of all, they publish footage of Steven Crowder. Like, do we deny that that's him in the footage? You, you said the family? Yeah. Th sent well, they yeah, that footage published of Steven Crowder. Do, do, we, do we deny that that's him in the well, video? Well, of course not. Yeah, it's him. So like so he should their argument the in the case, in their filing, is that that cause people to because their rumble deal is based on subscribers or whatever to unsubscribe and that hurts the it definitely that, it's true yes yeah, so, but that's so not, he should sue them for it but that's not something you necessarily mm -hmm. have grounds to sue over if yes, i see is. something yes, if i see you do something bad in public that's a hundred percent you or it's or if something comes out that's bad in public and that makes me unsubscribe you can sue the them person for, yes. who revealed it is not necessarily liable for that the f okay I, I, this is really weird to me i it feels like you are emotionally trying to justify what we know to be true as if it was a good there's, or oh, acceptable thing. I, I, it makes no sense. Crowder's response is, of course, a lawsuit. That's the most rudimentary yeah. thing he could do. There's right. literally nothing else. Should he come out, go on his show, and start banging gongs, screaming, <laughs> my wife is a devil witch? <laughs> no. I mean, that's what Gerald basically did. The first thing he would do is file a lawsuit. And the idea that how dare he file a lawsuit? Well, no, it's literally what he would have to do. That's the reasonable, professional, and academic thing to do. I, Releasing I, footage to Yashar Ali is the despicable, evil thing to yeah, do. I Look... I do not like the fact that they did that. I understand why you go to an opposition journalist because they're going to publish whatever. Like, I get that. So then Crowder has to sue over it. He doesn't have to sue over it. He, does, saying, not, he does not have to sue his wife when he, doesn't he have to do knows exactly how much money she has but for a million dollars with the company. He doesn't have to do anything. The point is the reasonable professional response is a lawsuit. You I, file in a court, you say, Your Honor, to please clear stop. Your name too. Please, please stop them from doing these yeah. things. It's causing damage to us. I totally disagree. It's it's, it's defamation, it's disparagement, et cetera, I mean, we, et cetera. I mean, we'll see if that and, shakes and, out in the case or if it drops with the divorce. But, but, but listen, that, listen, that lawsuits, seems like, lawsuits that aren't seems rulings. Like, that seems like the exact tactic that Jared was talking about, where you try to bury somebody in okay, legal wait. costs oh, in okay, order to back, get okay. your outcome. Lawsuits are not rulings. I didn't okay? say they are rulings. So if but they're cost prohibitive. Someone takes a select cut a video footage that makes me look bad and omits any and all other context and it costs me money, the reasonable thing to do, Crowder's company probably went to a lawyer and they said, we'll file a lawsuit, but, harassment, but defamation, what's, et cetera. What's, what's the additional context in there? Because they're alleging that 18 seconds is removed from the video. That's what they said. You in see, once their again, video. you're equivocating and justifying. Uh, what no, they I'm did. just, I'm just asking. Like, did they this say is, right before that you're video, pulling a we're, gonna, we're gonna do a sketch? You're pulling, you're pulling a Krasenstein on me. I'm not, I'm just I asking. I am saying, Professionally and academically, the response to something like this is a lawsuit, period. I don't care what Crowder thinks. I don't care what Hillary thinks. Hillary leaks, the Hillary camp leaks footage to Yashar Ali, an opposition journalist, which causes massive damage to Stephen Crowder. It was a huge scandal. To the company. To the company him suing. personally and the company. Well, yeah. the company suing. Sure. I actually don't no, think no, no, that no. anybody would care about Jared if that, and if there that was, ring and the response, wasn't leaked. The response to this, absolutely. The response to this from Crowder is, I will now file a lawsuit for this uh, having been done. I that's that's I, it. I, I, I totally disagree that people wouldn't care about the Jared thing if not for the ring footage. Like that was an issue when okay, but, the but, Daily Wire thing. Right, was but the point. Out. The point. And we're people on, love drama. Like the, that the is point, a fact. The point we're on is, someone leaks footage to disparage you. There are emails where they're saying they want a PR campaign to to get favorable terms. When of they're divorce. summarizing from their lawyer, yeah. Okay, that's you're you're doing it again. I don't understand well, why you have I'm this giving, emotional giving, barrier giving, to defend. It's not, it's not an side. emotional barrier. I'm giving the context of that email. But when that's says, not relevant to what it says. Here's what the lawyer tells me, and then Jared puts up these experts, and like he's like, "Look, all right, let's they're let's conspiring slow down. like that." I'm sorry, Gerald. We'll, we'll slow down here. Great, great controversy. We're not talking about crowd anymore. John Smith is in a dispute with Jane Smith, and Jane Smith posts a picture of him farting in a dog's face. So he says, "I am going to sue you." You said, why would he sue her? 
Yeah. Well, that's the re that's the reasonable response to I, her posting this. That's a terrible this example. I don't think that's a reasonable response. Someone someone damages your company by posting embarrassing images about you. You file a lawsuit in response. We have defamation lawsuits all the time. Libel, slander, etc. But that's not, it's, it's not defamation or anything like that. And They're by saying, the way, though, defamation is much harder to win yeah. than a tortuous interference because if you can prove that somebody knew there was an agreement between two parties and they um, did something to specifically ruin that contract, that's it's much easier right, that, that, to sue for tortuous interference. And, and certainly different. My, my point is simply, just we'll, we'll end this point. Crowder responded to a PR smear with a lawsuit. That's that. Okay, what else do you do? I, I have a question for you because nobody's answered this like if six years after he quit the, um he was he was uh, jared was supposed to turn over uh text messages and discover or discovery which is normal in a lawsuit and get deposed like why didn't he just do that he didn't have to spend all that money on litigation like what was in those text messages that he does not want to give them over like that's that's what makes me think that these lawyers are like, you know, Jared, we're going to figure out a way that you don't have to turn this stuff in. Like, why is everybody helping him so that he doesn't have to turn over discovery? I mean, if you don't want to spend all that money on lawyers, it's OK. Just turn over discovery. I agree with you on the point that there's an interesting uh, statement from Jared about Crowder wanting ownership of his social media yeah, while Crowder had too. disparaged uh, uh, Daily Wire for something similar. I think that's an interesting point that should be addressed. I don't know how we get to that except through court proceedings, deposition, uh, and the release of and discovery. And, and that's like that. that's what's that's what's going on right now. But as far as like why you wouldn't want to turn over with discovery, nobody wants to turn over discovery. Like it's yeah. it's intrusive. This is like well, if you're not do committing any crimes, like let the government but go through your phone. He's describing it as legal abuse, and it's just so. Yeah, if you bog wait, wait, somebody so down, you can you he can bog somebody down in legal costs, he like spent intentionally the money to fight. in order to do that. Of course that's you can. If you file motions against them and they have to hire representation. But 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 I'll clarify that. That's in a movie exaggeration that you can dump you could bury someone in paperwork. It's 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 technically true, but people think it's like if if I were to file a bunch of claims and things, the judge would say, nice try and throw it in the garbage. Judges are human beings that I mean that that did happen in the divorce case. Like if you go to Tony Current Revolts uh because he was in the courtroom, if you go to his reporting, one of the things the judge was like, he's like, why are there so many motions? We exactly. only have two hours in this court. Exactly. The like, judge will say, nice try and get rid of it. The idea that you could actually, as a wealthy person, be like, I will bury you in paperwork. It's something people see in movies. The judge goes, why do you have 17 lawyers on this and 17 different filings? You are clearly trying to waste the court's time to put pressure. There's a, uh, there's a term for it in court they call, I forgot what it was. And, uh, they just, the judge will say no, and they throw it on the, they, we won't even read it, and they'll throw it in the garbage. I mean, you just said that the judges will do whatever, like, you know, yeah, earlier ju on. Ju judges but, are, ju but, ju yeah, like, but here's the thing, Jared fought with me, the judge. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry, no, just no, real, go ahead, real go ahead. quick, on the point of judges. I think, you know, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I can, you know, having grown up watching movies and TV, I certainly at a young age had this naive interpretation of what judges did. And then when you actually go to court, you're like, oh, imagine, imagine this, your neighbor and you are arguing over who gets the, the apples from the apple tree because his tree is growing onto your property. And so you go to the neighbor across the street to argue it to him. That's a judge. They, they, that's literally, he's going to be like, oh, why are you guys fighting about? And you're like, well, his tree goes into my yard. So I think the ap apples are mine. No, it's my tree. The apples are mine. And he's going to be like, I don't care about either of you. Take the apples that are on your side. Take the apples that are on your side and stop bothering me. That's what judges do. Yeah, but but to be clear, I, like I've actually had this done to me not in a in a in a civil context, in a criminal context. When I was twelve, I got wrongfully arrested. You pay a lawyer, a retainer. It covers five appearances. The prosecutor was trying to extend the appearances. Like that's that's what the strategy was, and that would run up the cost for me and for my family. So like there are ways that you ex of that course you can there's people that get legally people. abused. I just don't think that in this case, Jared was legally abused and, and the thing is he spent money to fight with the with the jet basically with crowder over the 202 position saying i don't want to give over um discovery and they fought about it that's why he yeah. spent money in litigation but the judge said no you have so after they fought he lost and then the judge said okay you have to give over discovery and then jared's like no i'm not going to do that i'm sorry but you can't go in one hand and say i want justice and this was done to me and then say well i'm not going to abide by the legal system and then on top of it, it's like now he's saying the other thing that he was saying is that he was um, there was like s sexual stuff that was going on on set and stuff like that. 
The thing is, you have, I think in Texas, 300 days to file a sexual harassment thing. So that was long right. gone. So he's really saying all that. I, I in and my they, opinion, they, they, he they, didn't care about that stuff. He didn't get sexually. They were, I don't know. It's probably some kind of, you know, frat, fratty type of thing. But was he really like traumatized over whatever happened? I don't think so. I mean, they kind of acknowledged that that happened in Gerald's video, Maybe. which is like, they said Jared started doing it. But I don't Jared think Jared was traumatized. It, I don't think it's like a Me Too funny. situation. And it's I, like- I don't think so either. I, I also think it's kind of like, probably the attorneys are like, well, let's let's talk about what went wrong when you worked there like what could we pull listen if i was at if i was at hr i wouldn't say look we thought it was funny and like, it, like <laughs> no what, what that Gerald was said, weird that I, was I would have I been like listen listen don't first of all don't admit to yeah. that happening <laughs> right. back and forth like but like the correct response when an employee starts exposing himself is to fire said employee wait, wait, jared was exposing himself that's what gerald said in his in response this video. he said he said we're he not said he started it yeah we're not he started it which is like the worst defense ever because i thought that like, was weird that yeah. they admitted to it yeah and then he was like, but we, we're not condemning him for it. We thought it was funny. And yeah. like Steven and Jared thought it was funny. I'm like, this is like, like, get, get, don't, don't. If, if someone at Timcast exposed themselves, they would never step foot on yeah, the you'd be fine. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't expose yourself back to them as like an Security ongoing Security would joke. escort them out and they would wait for a vehicle and that would be the end of it. You wouldn't even yeah. call a vehicle. You'd be like, start hiking, like <laughs> go you know, catch think, a cab. Well, no, no, be twisted. We, we, oh, first, police vehicle. So, so, uh. The, the crazy thing about the corporate world people uh, should understand is you have to do it based on law because we live in a pseudo communist country, right? We're not a free market capitalist country. We're a mixed economy, which means there's tons of regulations. And people like to think like, why do they have these diversity trainings? They're required to by law. Yeah. Not, and it's not so yeah. much by law, but by mechanism that you're legally required to have insurance. But insurance companies only insure you if you do the diversity trainings and the companies get terrified of lawsuits because they could lose their insurance and it shuts their company down. Yeah. All of this crazy stuff. So if someone here were to expose themselves, the first thing we do is we call a private security company who then comes and escorts the person on camera with body cameras and all that stuff gently off the property and then waves them a polite goodbye. There was that story recently where a woman went on TikTok and claimed a guy shoved her down the stairs. Did you see this one? No. And then... The bar released oh, the footage. Yeah, I have. Oh, I did see that. Oh, that made me so mad. <laughs> and so, why does the bar? Why did the bar have security come escort her out politely with cameras? Because they're you're yeah. required. So, like, especially a public accommodation where you're letting people in, legal requirement to have insurance, or or yeah. not even not even necessarily legal requirement. It could be like any standard business needs a loan to to finance the property and the equipment for. Okay, in order to right. get the loan, you need the insurance. In order to get the insurance, gotta have cameras. In order in order to get the insurance, also you need security guards. Right. This is exactly why. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, so the probably the most egregious statement that Taylor Lorenz wrote in the New York Times about me, she wrote a statement basically saying that I leaked nude photos of a client for revenge because he was trying to leave. This is after she, in pre-publication, before she published the article, she said, um, you know, we we heard that Ari was doing this, and my attorney said, "Absolutely not, that's defamatory." And she said, "Well, we're not we're not saying that she leaked them uh, publicly." Um, so in the article, it says, "Ari, she leaked my nudes." I mean, she she knew she acknowledged that we're not saying that Ari leaked nudes, and then she published she leaked my nudes. So what actually happened is that I was representing a 25 year old guy, and. Uh, another manager texted me and I was representing like TikTok houses and there was a house full of girls and a house full of guys. And the manager said um, that uh, this guy is sending nude photos to a 14 year old girl. So imagine as a manager, if I hadn't looked into that. So I took and I said, what are you talking about? They sent me just like, um, and how do you know about that? Well, it's in a chat room with 100,000 people. Anyway, I take the message. I send it to my HR person who's under NDA to my lawyer and to the guy that was being accused. And I said, did you do this? What's the deal? Oh no, somebody broke into my iCloud and leaked all my messages. It's all in a text message. So, you know, I, I think I was doing my moral ethical duty to look into like, is this guy that I'm representing sending nudes to a 14? And, and what did it turn out? In the New York Times, it looks like I'm a total weirdo that's, you know, leaking my clients nudes. I mean, that's how they can twist the stories. And these people are professionals. I mean, There's, it was wild. When I was a little girl, I thought the New York Times is like, you know what I mean? You, you, if you get an article in the New York Times, you hang it up on the wall, you put it on the frame. I didn't know they could do this. Here's how me. crazy Here's how crazy it is. They could go to a homeless guy and they can say, how would you like to be an anonymous source that makes this claim? Yep. Homeless guy says, done. They go, 
Got it. They then go publish a story claiming the actual justice warrior was caught selling bananas to children at a, on a playground or something, according to our sources. And then when you file a defamation suit and you say this is this is a false statement of fact, they say we have an anonymous source who confirmed that you did it. And then when the lawsuit comes and the judge orders the journalist, they go, I will never reveal my source. And they don't have to. A uh, well, no, a they, they'll be held in contempt. And I think the longest but journalists have protections. They have like a shield law, but there are. But you'll still be held in contempt. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, you can be held in contempt of court, but typically it's like if 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 a journalist fabricates a story to make their career, they can simply rest on I will never reveal my sources and gladly spend two months in jail and then come out a martyr and a hero. Yeah. Right. It's 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 crooked. Well, and Evil when, people, when they go after some like in that situation, they were not expecting that I was going to sue the New York Times. When I went to the lawyers that I had at the time, they're like, sweetheart, like you got railroaded, but you can't sue the New York Times. Like you don't have the money. The, the, the New York Times hasn't lost a defamation suit since the 1960s. Did and, you win? Huh? Did you win? So I I got past motion to dismiss, actually. And um, Harmeet Dillon and her firm, Matt Sarlson, they represented me. Um and, but even when you're in a lawsuit like that, uh, the judge decided twice that I could move forward. But now I have to uh, hi have hire, um, what is it called, experts that of how much money I lost, you know, 200, probably like 100, at least 200 grand. And it's already been four years of my life. Yep. It's like, you know, I, and, and my attorneys, you know, they asked me, what do you think? And, and the other thing is too, is only one statement went through. The, the, ju the judge said, okay, the one statement about the nude photos can move forward. But then the New York Times could depose me and say, well, did the, uh, did the rest of your article like kind of ruin your career too? The, you know, the things that were based on opinion or whatever. So I would have to prove that only that one statement. So if, I, if they depose me and I said, yeah, actually this other thing they said could hurt me. Well, oh, okay, well, we don't have to pay you anything then. Right, they'll say, you'll say, the whole article was bad. And they'll go, really? Your Honor, that means 90% of the damages stem from non-viable right. complaint. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, she went on Tucker Carlson. So that's also why she can't get a job. Or, you know what I'm saying? They, they'll pull anything. And so it wasn't a slam dunk. And it's very, I mean, there's billionaires that haven't been able to sue for I, defamation. So I think the real legal system is actually just force people to just settle instantly because judges will not help you. Like, I do not, I, I had a labor dispute 15 or no, this is 20 years ago. And after months of litigation and we had hard proof witness testimony of all of this violation of the law, the lawyers uh, that we had who came back said, you're each going to get paid a few thousand dollars and it's over. And I said, whoa, 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 like we've caught them breaking the law. We've caught them doing all these things. And they were like, we calculated how much you would have gotten if you weren't fired. And it's six thousand five hundred dollars. You can take this or you get nothing. So we recommend you take it. And right. I was like, what's the punishment? What's the fine for the company for breaking the law? And they're like, nothing. Right. And right. I was like, wow. And they were like, be happy that you're getting you're getting some it's cash. It's unbelievable. Go and, away. Yeah, you have to yeah. they, you have to prove damages and then you can get punitive damages on we top of that of in theory. We had but all of like it. Though, that's a but, much harder burden. But, so but, I think the company must have offered your attorneys a settlement, right? So, that, so uh, I don't want to get in too much detail because of the settlement itself. You know, afterwards they say you'll never yeah. disparage the company or whatever. But uh, the issue was basically uh, keeping it vague. The company came back and said, OK, it's been six months. We'll give each of your clients about six, seven thousand dollars and then we're done with it. Otherwise, you know, yeah. like you're going nowhere. Well, and so we actually had the government involved. We had the government actually investigating criminal wrongdoing in labor violations and things like this. And all of them came back and said, guys, we really just want to go get a cheeseburger. And so when I'm talking to like actual employees of government watchdog groups and I'm like, here's all the proof they did it. Here's the witness testimony. There's five witnesses. They were like, do I have to? Can you just take the money? I could sit here and play Pac-Man right now if you weren't in my office. Mm -hmm. And so basically you've got everyone saying, why are you stupid? It's $6,000. Just take the money. And then, of course, it's it's so insane. It's like it's like the trial tax, but for civil court. They, they come back and then even your own lawyers and even the watch the government watchdogs are like, listen, in three years, there could be a big story about a one hundred thousand dollar penalty. You might end up getting paid twenty thousand dollars, but there's six thousand dollars. 
a check right here with your name on it. Don't yeah. you want to just let them get away with it? And I said, no. Right. And they said, unfortunately, the other clients involved have accepted the money. And I'm like, it's <laughs> all you can well, do. Okay. And the thing is with the New York Times is they have a rule where they actually won't, I guess they don't uh, do settlement. So they, they won't pay you. So That's even if they would have agreed to like do mediation and say like, okay, well, we'll, you know, we'll change that one sentence in the article. I mean, but that's what's that going to do for me? I I would rather just end the thing and be able to speak freely, and I don't have to sign a gag order or whatever to tell my story because I think you know being able to survive a media hit piece is something that is valuable to help other people. I mean, I used to get messages all the time of people telling me like I'm kind of like you know thank you for standing up because I was destroyed by the media. I mean, you don't you hear about Crowder and you know Johnny Depp and all. You don't hear about the little guys because they they do, they're told by their lawyers, well, you can't see the New York Times. Oh, you can't do anything about with, it. That, with, that with was the, the example I was thinking. I couldn't think of it. Depp. Amber Heard did file a bunch of her allegations in court. And if we take like just her complaint as a source, Johnny Depp's a terrible guy, even though yeah, like course. he ended sure, up winning sure. that case. But, and, and there's counterpoints to be made. I'm like not. someone could say he kicked my dog and then you respond, the dog was biting me. You know what yeah. I mean? My question is, um, sure. why, why are so many people triggered by this like Jared? So... Like I spoke out because I saw some inconsistencies and there's literally people like on X that are huge influencers that I, I thought I was friendly with that like unfollowed me, didn't, you know, didn't want to talk to me anymore. And I'm just like, why is this so, why are people so, I guess. The, I, the, one, one of the big issues that actually was the reason why I was like, hey, we should do a show on this was the conservative feminists who came out being like, Crowder should have to pay. And like this idea that, uh, so, you know, what I said was Crowder is paying twenty five thousand dollars a month. It's a temporary order during the proceedings. Uh, it's been it's been stated by numerous people, but everyone's arguing what's true and what's not. So it is in dispute, I suppose. But the Crowder estate, which is both the uh, Crowder and his wife, uh, are paying the legal fees of all the lawyers involved. So which which, which makes sense, considering you're splitting up assets in, in a divorce anyway. Crowder then has to additionally pay twenty five thousand dollars to her per month, which she's then using for uh, all of her legal fees in response to the Crowder lawsuit, which is separate. This this is inaccurate. So in, in Texas, so I looked this up because I assumed this to be true because I was like, this is so like bold. So in Texas, at the end of a divorce, the estate will cover the fees. That like, That is something that will happen. But the presumed rule in Texas is that you have to put up the money in the beginning of the proceedings. So since Crowder's a stay-at-home mom, she uh, Hillary Crowder, obviously. <laughs> both Crowder. <laughs> yeah, both Crowders are stay-at-home moms. It's a really weird divorce case. She has to file a petition, and then they get allot her a certain amount of money. That amount is the $25,000. That temporary court order is supposed to cover her attorney fees and minimal living expenses because the idea is, is if you marry somebody and you get them to leave their job like Stephen did, she was making more money when they got married, and do we, then they're- Do we know how much? I don't. I, he said. He said in the past that he wanted the traditional life. So even though she was making more money, because they married ten years, like he was yeah. starting out. So that they, you can't just like run up the costs on them when they can't literally fi have any lawyer. Like so, this is different from like whether you're using lawfare or whatever. And so, so that's what the twenty five thousand is for. Like that's what it's supposed to be covered, and so, that's why it's a temporary motion. But like you know, you had said at one point is child support. It's not child support. Texas caps child support even at the max end at like ninety two hundred dollars. So it's definitely not that. This is to cover her her legal costs. But there's been yeah. additional uh, documents that she has incurred way more lawyer bills. Uh, Lauren Southern actually published it in her video, the actual ruling by the judge that had to have him set aside additional money because you do have to pay for the, the these individual motions and all these different hours related to the case. So, so that money has been wildly misinterpreted sure. on purpose, by the way, by Gerald, that this is money that she's putting in her pocket in order so, to spend. It's just not true. My my view on this, what I tweeted was, okay, fair, fair point on the child support. If it's not child support, it was like a temporary. It's like it's like an allotment he has to pay her during the and proceedings. That, and that's to protect Crowder, right? Because if it was the estate that just paid unlimited, then she could do like, you know, what a lot of people think he's doing, where you're just running up the costs on the estate. So by the my, time the divorce right. is over, and so my point is, he's bankrupt. My point was that he has to pay her for, I believe she initiated the divorce. Uh, she filed, but like, remember, she filed after Crowder had already hired a lawyer and moved out of the house and cut her off financially. So like technically she initiated the divorce sure. in legal documents. Uh, I, I think she's entitled to nothing during these proceedings. And I think the problem is no fault divorce. 
And I think the we're not dealing with a traditional at fault divorce. We're dealing with uh, irreconcilable differences. And I think the real answer should have been that when problems arose, a judge told them both STFU, you are in a marriage. It is a sacred covenant. You will not do X, Y, and Z. The problem I have with this is marriage has become dating. It's, it's, it's dating, dating with like um, uh, strings attached in, in the financial world after the fact. No, 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 no. Don't get married if you don't get married. Okay. If you, if, and if, if you don't want to get into a position where you have to file for a divorce and hire lawyers for these reasons, then don't get married right. at all. And so the issue is not so much like in, in this argument I'm making, it's not to do with Hillary uh, uh, or Stephen specifically. It's about the fact that we live in this world where people get married and then go, you know what? It was a mistake. Let's sever ties. You pay me. I, like, no, okay, hold on. This whole thing is broken. The whole thing is broken. The, the other, the other point you know, so like Lauren uh, Southern responded to me saying, or she responded in general to many people. So what? Hillary gives up her job for Stephen, but now that they're getting a divorce, she has no money. And I'm like, even if she kept her job, she would never have anywhere near as much money as Stephen Crowder has. Like, so, so I, I don't, I don't appreciate this argument that Crowder, as a wealthy man, pays her 25k a month. If Stephen Crowder was worth nothing and had no job. We wouldn't be having this argument. So it's not an issue of whether she's entitled to as a woman and give up her job. It's an issue of Stephen has money. Therefore, they think he should pay. So there's an interesting phenomenon here that for some reason has emerged in this particular case where you're seeing a lot of these traditional conservatives actually come out as full on feminist as soon as it comes to the issue yeah. of divorce. I, I don't think it's feminist at all. If you want, but it literally if is. you want to incentivize traditional marriage, like you can't like put one party in a position where they get totally like ripped off in case of a divorce. You're correct. And like, the response the, is the to not allow divorce. The feminist response is to say that all these women need to like st store away money in case of a divorce. No, it isn't. The, the the, like in order to pay for it. Like the, 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 the traditional response to how you fix marriage is divorce is not allowed. Okay, but there, uh, there's, there there's are... rare circumstances where like a guy is threatening to murder and beating his wife and his kids uh, and infidelity is one of these things. These these are people who I don't think those accusations are on the table. They're they're mostly just angry with each other and yelling at each other and yeah. they're not getting along. That's where a judge comes in and says, you are grown adults. You will behave appropriately. You have children. Those children need functioning parents. You will treat this relationship properly, get therapy. And at the very least, if you don't like being around each other, you will be professional. And, and you chose this, this covenant. We now as a society, this is why it, it is absolutely a feminist position to say we should allow for divorce over irreconcilable yeah, differences. But like, what are you, what are you advocating for? For them to like live in the same house when they don't like each other? Like, yes, what? that's crazy. I, I, I think that the, then don't get married. Don't get married. This, this is what I'm saying. You don't have to get married. Nobody made them do it. They said, so let's in, get married. And then, in, they, and, then your, and then 10 so years in, later, they're like, I'm not having fun. I quit. So in your like theory of like how this should work, like, so you should be able to theoretically using an example, very like not related to this at all. Like, you know, let's say you're a media personality and you move out, buy a townhouse, and then you cut your wife off financially. Like, you should be able to do that. There should no. be no court redress what for that. Wait, 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 that's what, the hap that's what happened in this case. So, no, no, as long as you don't get divorced, though. No, the judge will say, stop, you are married, STFU, you will both be in this house, you will raise your kids, you will stop fighting, and you will get therapy. If you don't want to get married, don't get married. You, you just said that the, you don't trust judges in the way that they handle people with money versus no money, and now you're like, the totally judge separate needs argument. to assess whether or not you should live in the same house? That's, that's completely irrelevant to the point that I'm making. Okay, so let's talk about if you don't want to get married, you don't get married. Instead, the, the, the progressive feminist and liberal response has been, let's weaken the institution of marriage. And I'm like, whoa, leave marriage as it is. People just don't have to get married. Like, they're, they're, people need to understand. And, I'm, and, and, and part of me, I'm kind of glad we're seeing all this. Because when you see the, the shocking reality of divorce, many people realize like, uh oh, there's a problem here. Maybe I shouldn't get married. Maybe you shouldn't. If you get married and you swear an oath till death do us part, I do not believe you should be allowed to get divorced unless they, uh, except in extreme circumstances, like traditionally what it used to be was infidelity, abuse, criminal activity, things like this. With the issue, with the Crowders, yes, I very much believe a family court judge should say, the problem here is two people who don't get along. Be adults, grow up, shut your mouths, do not fight in front of the kids. That's it. Okay, so let me, because I mean-
like that's like an ideal like perception of what should be but like let's say we're, that meets your parameters for something that you can get divorced over okay and but you have a traditional like abuse and stuff yeah yeah well like not this case but like let's say a, a theoretical beating case. His wife. yeah something like that so in that particular case like let's say the one of the people is same situation it makes all the income the other person gave up their job 10 years ago like should they be able to run up the costs and like when the other person can't afford an attorney be frozen out of the estate even though that estate in texas law it's, it's is not a, a it's joint not, estate it's, it's not a singular scenario in the instance of say abuse a woman shows up to the police covered in blood with teeth missing and then they go okay we're arresting well, the guy. now the guy's not working but i'm saying if you eventually file for divorce in that kind of situation like how should the attorneys be paid for in 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 a situation of like a woman is being mercilessly beaten yeah like a, an abuse situation that meets your criteria for divorce right i think i think in the, perhaps then yes the the estate itself would be used to fund the proceedings for both sides like it, texas law says if if you have you know one person who can't pay or whatever or like you know i'm talking well, about during the, the proceedings the the, the family the family is is a dual income like they're, they 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 file jointly they're married or whatever then it should be that the divorce lawyers are paid. Now, I think the issue there is you don't really have the same kind of divorce law when you have evidence of clear violations of fault in a, in a divorce. Now, that being said, infidelity is where things get do things do get particularly troubling. And I know a lot of people then say, Tim, the problem here is women will fabricate or men will fabricate. They'll accuse each other of infidelity. And I'm like, yeah, bad people do bad things. How about you don't get married? Well, I, I think the but the reason you got so much pushback is because like the practical reality is is that a lot of people on the right are pushing for a more traditional like stay at home like kind of marriage situation. Now I'm getting married, but my fiance is gonna make pretty good money. Like she's currently working on her career and all that. But and but like you know I I would expect if I got her to stay at home, if like we were to get divorced, that I wouldn't be able to drown her in legal costs and like you know half your states or whatever. But, Texas, but what if you were poor? Well, if we were, if, first of all, if you're poor, if you and you were poor, yeah, if yeah, same thing. If I didn't have the money to cover it, she and should like, have to pay for we're it. married, yeah, from the from our from, joint from estate. estate, yeah, yeah. My problem is no fault divorce. It's uh, not. It's not that Crowder has to pay. It's that it's no fault divorce. Like get, getting divorced for we are fighting a lot. But I'm like, saying this is why you're getting pushback. It's like the misstatement of the 25k, which to be fair, that was put out intentionally, I believe, by Louder with Crowder to make it seem like it's greedy Hillary. That was their narrative. And then it was the it's the idea that like, yeah, the traditional housewife gets totally screwed under your scenario. But, but why is if it there unfair, is a divorce? Why is it unfair to criticize Jared? That's what I'm like. So I wasn't getting involved in the whole thing. And people were like, I made a funny video of it was like, have you seen the social network? You know, when um, they're basically it was about the Facebook and, right. and um, they, they basically have one of the partners sign a contract and he comes and he's really mad at, at Mark Zuckerberg because he signed the contract. And he basically signed away his shares, but he signed it. And I mean, it, you know, they had litigation over. Anyway, I made like a funny video I'm like, you know, not gay Jared, I thought was like a comedian. And people were just like, you are so, you know, they're they're treating Jared like he's this dainty flower that can't be criticized. And I'm like, why? I mean, why can't we just criticize? And, and it's all these people. And I'm guessing it's because of the Hillary thing that they're they're so triggered by it. But it, it's like you I, should be able to ask questions I, about I th Jared. I think a lot of people don't like Steven Crowder, to be fair. Yep. That, that That's uh, that's 100 percent built into this process. I don't find myself in this camp. Like, I don't care about the divorce i didn't even know his wife's name until this whole thing came up like that's the way i want to live with people in their personal the, the lives. people who hate crowder like, say things yeah. like tim's friends with crowder that's why he's doing this i'm like i think i've talked to crowder 10 times in my life but but that's the thing so there's always going to be a huge portion of people that if you come out against Crowder, it doesn't matter they're going to be on that side do you agree that if you're like dunking on taylor lorenz and all these journalists all the time because they're using shady tactics they they twist media narratives they and if you're going to say that that's wrong, then and you figure out that maybe something Jared is doing is a little manipulative and twisting a narrative and whatever, like, why is calling that out? Now, all of a sudden, you're, you know, we're going to take you out of the, the cool club. It's like the mean girls club. I got all these mean girls well, the, against me. And I'm like, but why? There's a, there is a clicking element. Like, these are these are all like the case. Like, you know, people don't like Steven. So anybody who says anything, even if it was like, even if this guy, even if it wasn't Jared, and it was just a random guy claiming to be Jared, and we all knew it wasn't him because it was like some Asian dude. And we're like, we've all seen what Jared looks well, like. There would be people mad that you didn't take the fake well, Jared side. Like, let me, let me, let me read a super. Oh, yeah. Real quick, for it's a super chat. Little Rock says, and an attorney 
Lotter with Crowder can address what has been said by Jared, and they can talk about what has been filed as a complaint, response or exhibits. There was no violation by Gerald, and he was advised by an attorney, and everything he said was reviewed. So yeah, the, you asked, why don't they address the issue of seizing his, his social media accounts? I, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I wouldn't, but my assumption would be this. Yeah. I don't know if this guy's actually a lawyer or not, yeah. but, but he I, did, I, I, it sounded I, like he was saying that he could have addressed it in that super chat. No, he's saying they didn't because they could only address. Oh, no, no, you're right. You're right, right. Yes, yes, you are correct. Yeah, he could have addressed what uh, what Jared had said like that. That's the, like that's the issue I had, because I'm like, I'll hear both sides. Like my issue with Jared is like he's like, I can't tell a side. So full disclosure. And it was for the meme. I donated one dollar more specifically than Ben Shapiro just for the <laughs> meme. Like, when in my life am I ever going to be able to spend more money than Ben Shapiro on anything? Like, Wait, to Jared? Yeah. Five hundred. Um, what, what did Ben give him? Ben gave him five hundred dollars, and as soon as it was confirmed, it was him on his Twitter account. I was like five hundred and one dollars. I'm better than Ben <laughs> Shapiro. Like for the meme. But like, ben, wait, wait, Ben Shapiro gave Jared five hundred dollars. Yeah. I can't believe anybody gave Jared money. I'm. Mean, uh, I, I totally as, can. As, as soon as I saw this, I was like, wait a minute. He's saying he needs money because of a non disparagement, non disclosure, but he's violating it right now. Well, it's like immediately the, I was like, what? It's the impending legal action or whatever that's he's gonna. You do need money for lawyers if you're gonna get into a legal battle. I just I immediately found it odd that a guy claiming he needs legal fees to fight an NDA was violating the NDA. I'm like, well, you already violated it. What do you need? Like if, if you are, so when I was a kid, my friends would be like, I was like, Hey, you want to go skate? And like, I can't, I'm grounded. And I, I'm, I would go, what does that mean? And they're like, well, I can't go outside. And I'm like, why not? Cause I'm grounded. What'll happen if you go outside? Or what do you mean? I, I, I can't. I'm like, yeah. like, no, no, let's like take your skateboard, go outside. What happens? <laughs> okay. Grounded more. And I'm like, okay. So you're grounded longer. Then what happens? What do you mean? I can't go outside again. I'm like, what happens if you're grounded longer and then you go outside again? They'll ground me even longer. And I was like, do you see where we're going with this? So the dude doesn't have the money for, for he doesn't have money in general. He's under legal action, which you can't get blood from a turnip. Right. And uh, what do they say? Uh, there's a saying in, 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 there's another saying related to this in, in law, suing someone who's penniless or something like that. And uh, uh, you like, you'll always lose or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's like, help, I need money because I'm under an NDA that I'm currently in violation of right now. So I don't fear the consequences of losing the case because I will instantly as soon as they show the video I use for the fundraiser. And I'm like, yeah, but so it's flushing money down the toilet. He <laughs> could he could presumably win with his NLRB uh, complaint. Here's another Labor red flag, by the way, guys, is like the day after he raises all this money, so, uh, was it like quartering post or something? And he, and he reposted and he's like, if you keep um, <laughs> saying these opinions about me, I'm going to sue you. And like, first of all, you can't yeah. sue for defamation over opinion. So like nobody should be taking legal advice from Jared. OK, and then his attorney. So, because I called it out, I, ca I called a couple things out, and his attorney starts responding to me, and uh, and I was like, well, he basically the attorney says, um, well, if somebody talks bad about you, you know, you should just like say you know, the opposite thing. You just come out and say the other thing. And I'm like, for an attorney to be like, make it so simple of like, once a lie is spread in the world and it's damaging your business, it's not like you can just put it back in the box. This guy is simplifying things, I think, on purpose. And oh, I mean, the, the, the whole filing about the NDA, in my opinion, it's just like, this is a loophole. We're going to make this whole big deal about an NDA, which a lot of people sign NDAs. We're going to get him out of the NDA because... To be fair, I did talk to an attorney and she said, you know what, it's in the, the non-solicitation clause, or sorry, not the non-solicitation, non the NDA may have been overly broad. So when- yeah. But isn't there also a non-disparagement? Uh, I believe yes. it was a non-disparagement yes. and, an, and a non-disclosure. So I guess from what I, she explained to me- in the non-disclosure, because they have the text in that, that guy's post, I think it's like, it says in the non-disparagement, like you also don't say anything about- The fact that it's like in perpetuity, that could be damaged. She, she basically said- that she felt as though the NDA was sort of drafted, you know, by it wasn't drafted in a very because uh, well no, normally done they're way. meant to protect trade secrets. Like you know, let's say non disclosure. Like, yeah, let, let's say like you know we we're we work here and then which we don't, but let's say we work here, but um like you're doing a documentary or whatever. Like I I can't because I signed a non disparagement. No, send, no, 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 hold on, these are different things. Non-disclosure. Oh, non right, right, right. Not, so I want to make sure they're separate because I want to address the yeah, non-disparagement Yeah, they're different. Yeah, the, I meant the non-disclosure. Sorry, obviously. It's not disparaging for me to say what I'm going to say. I can't go and say, hey, yo, Tim's working on a documentary about this particular case or whatever, like to the Daily Wire, and then they so, scoop you for it. You so know? We, we have NDAs here, and it's specifically for that reason, and people need to understand that that doesn't preclude someone from, like if someone came out and said, Tim did bad thing, 
They're like, release the NDA, Tim. No, no, no. no. Yeah. The NDA doesn't stop them from doing that. Uh, not disparagement, Mike. Right? Not, not, not disparagement would. Non-disclosure simply means they can't release information pertaining to the operation of the business. Right. So if someone said Tim did bad thing, I could argue, ha, but bad thing was part of business. And a judge, depending on what bad thing was, would be like, shut up. That's you're wasting our time. And so this, this doesn't apply. And uh, so we, we've actually had instances where uh, without getting into too much detail for obvious legal reasons, because when I mention these lawsuits, we've we've had a handful from both us being sued and us suing others. There have been instances where people have done things that I would I would say are crimes, but the things they did uh, involved the release of information that I would say probably is on the line of how the business operates, but no lawyer would actually think it was a plausible argument. So there are people who are able to actually break the law, get away with it. We've had we've had several instances where crimes were committed against us and the government is just like, we don't care. Screw you. Right. The judges say, is anyone hurt? No. Then we're not doing this. And I'm like, yeah. these are federal felonies. And they're like, we don't care. Well, even lawyers will advise you sometimes like when this whole thing happened, people were like, well, why didn't you just sue all the influencers? Didn't they have contracts with you? And it's like, um, I went to the lawyers and, I'm, you know, at first I was directing my you know frustration at the at the influencers and they're like what are you gonna do you're gonna you as a talent agent who wants to develop talent you're gonna go sue a bunch of influencers you know that some of them haven't made it yet you know and and some of the people that spoke bad about me i wasn't even signed i had actually said no thank you i don't want to represent you and they went to taylor and said oh yeah we were signed to ari and we got a bad deal i mean these people can twist things, but people that don't have a lot to lose are kind of dangerous sometimes. This this is why non-disparagements exist. So the NDA, the non-disclosure is like, we've developed methodologies and technologies here at Timcast for how we operate. Uh, there's forward-facing things. I find absolutely hilarious when I see people doing the same thing we do. I'm like, wow, it's really crazy that people have used the same font, the same structure of videos and like all these other other things. Like, why not? You know, if it yeah. works, people want to make Format. something that works. So internally, there are things that uh, like the way we hang the cameras, they're not in the walls. And we have in the new studio, we have wiring that goes internally. The way we made that operate the way we made it so that you can easily access and replace cables while they're running through the whole walls of the studio is our specific methodology. And it's very light. It, it's a technology in that we've created a, a system by which wires can run and be easily accessed. We we don't want our trade secrets that we spend tons of money on of to right. be given to other people so they can compete with us. To be fair, in that instance of the wiring, I really, really don't care. But we do have, we do have other things. Typically, I'm totally fine with explaining how we do things, how it operates, how much money videos make, why they make that money. We have we have tons. I have tons of people who are like, I'd love to come and have you just tell me all these things. And I'm like, yep, no problem. I don't need to charge money right. to anybody to consult. We could, but it's fine. However, the reason non-disparagements exist, separate issue is you had people who you did not represent who lied. Now, why would they do that? It's like, I don't know you. We're not enemies. I have no issue here. They see an opportunity for gain. And so yeah. if you... And everything is content. Remember, these are people exactly. that want to be famous. They will do right. anything to be famous. And you have Taylor Lorenz over here. Well, maybe if you're in the New York Times, you could get verified. I mean, before Instagram yep. verification was like the holy grail for influencers. That's yep, all true. they wanted. So we don't have non-disparagements here. I know why companies do. Because we've had instances where people make up lies about what's happening here. It's the weirdest thing. And so yeah. if someone is, let's say... I'm gonna give a total hypothetical. John Smith is working for a big company and he gets caught stealing. He gets caught red handed, not on camera, no hard criminal evidence, but the boss sees it, writes him up for theft and then says, you are immediately terminated, hand over your badge and never come back. You're lucky we're not calling the police or they do call the cops and the cops are like, look, we don't have any proof he committed. It. It's going to be hard to prove. We say just terminate him for cause. This is the reason. The guy walks out the door fuming and angry that he got caught, immediately calls a journalist and says the guy was exposing himself. Then the New York Times says, we have an anonymous source who claims, or not even, this person was fired after he caught his boss, or, or a woman gets fired, or a man, and pr more probably in this scenario, more so a woman, and accuses the boss of impropriety or, right. or harassment. So then you create non-disparagements so yeah. that, not so that you can cover up your wrongdoing, but so that they can't go and lie to make money right. and grift off of their wrongdoing. And this is like, so, I mean, anybody that watches reality TV, I mean, you, you'll you never see a, lo a lot of the people that are on The Bachelor, that are on Love is Blind, 
they don't release the secrets of the behind the scenes because they know that there's this big company, ABC, that they can come after them. Even look at Tucker Carlson. You won't hear him bad mouthing Fox. You know, people and even Dave Landa, I mean, they, they, people abide by these agreements because they know it, a big company could sue me. For example, when Taylor Lorenz was coming after me and uh, she was saying that I didn't pay influencers on time, which was not true. In order to uh, basically provide exculpatory information, stuff that would say that, you know, I was innocent, I would have to breach my NDA with said company that was supposed to pay us, right? So if I go and say, oh, this Fortune 500 company paid us late, and that's why the influencers not didn't get paid, not because I didn't pay them, then that Fortune 500 company can sue me yep. because I broke my NDA. So my lawyer was like, even though this will basically exonerate you, you can't share that. And what did I do? I I complied, but you know, I I did the right thing. And, and Wait, I is, feel like isn't there normally like a court proceedings like carve out? I think even in the non disparagement that they publish for Jared's case, like it's like except obviously if there's like court proceedings, like there's where the terms of the deal. All, well, all the or, or all the influencers that, breach their non disparagement non NDAs that like, with me. But is I, that an issue because I didn't it's have a the third, money. To sue it's them like all. A, it's the third party company that was involved. Like so. Is well, that so here's why I have some like empathy for for the Crowder situation is because somebody that has nothing to lose is is really messing with your business, and then you have these people over here that are probably going to benefit. You know, I don't. In my situation, it was it was UTA, and so of course you're like trying to get to the bottom of it. Now I don't know who you know. St Stephen Crowder sounds like he has a lot of enemies. You know. Uh, I don't know how, do you think the conservative media space is, is very competitive in terms of, or you think? It no, it's, it's, it's pretty complimentary. Yeah. Friendly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, so I don't know how, but, you know, but it does seem like he really had a, a fight with Daily Wire. And of course, I'm not saying that they are behind it. it, but if you find out that somebody's having turmoil, right. And they're like your enemy and your competitor and you find out they're having a messy divorce and like, if you could add a little fuel to the fire of, of somebody that you really hate. I don't see, you know, it's like just uh, Ben Shapiro doing the $500. Maybe he wasn't behind it. You know, it's just like, <laughs> that's let a statement me just, though. Yeah, yeah. Let me get my people to like, really, you, you know, you messed with us. Now we're going to, that's typical, I guess, in any competitive space is that people are going to want to take down their competitors, especially somebody that's slighted them. Man, the Daily Wire, like Crowder, and the Daily Wire have a lot of haters. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they certainly have their big fan bases, but Crowder's got a lot of people, especially on the right, who just hate him. The Daily Wire, especially. I think the Daily Wire now, because of the Candace Owens stuff, I think Candace is fantastic, by the way. I, I like, you know, I tweeted this before. I didn't think much of Candace Owens until I went on her show. And I wasn't, I wasn't saying I didn't think much of her in the negative sense. Like, I don't think much of that guy. No, no, no. What I meant was I rarely, she rarely ever came to mind. I didn't pay attention to her. I didn't follow her. I didn't really think of her at all. And then when I went on her show and we actually talked, I found her logic to be sound, well-researched, and I was fairly impressed. I was like, wow, she's actually pretty good at what she does. And she doesn't back down when she believes something to be correct, so I can respect that. Uh, so when she's at the at the Daily Wire and, and is saying the things that she wants to say, and then Ben Shapiro comes out and says, uh, you know, we have an Overton window at the Daily Wire. We're not going to support certain ideas. It flies in the face of things he said in the past about other companies doing the same thing. So I can, I can understand yeah. why people are like, oh, the Daily I saw, Wire. Yeah, I saw it. Was it Andrew, um, Andrew the comedian? Clavin. Yeah, talking about it. Oh, no. The oh. comedian, somebody else. Andrew Clavin works at the deal. Not Andrew yeah. Clavin. Um, flagrant podcast. Anyway, he was he was talking about that as well. And I think. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen Ben's statement and he's like, yeah, like I would never advocate for somebody to be removed from a platform, but we're a publisher and we have like an ideology. And by the way, good on Megyn Kelly asking him that question. Do you right. agree with dissent in the conservative space, except when it comes to Israel? And like the very, <laughs> very well put so uh, question. But I'm yeah. sorry, like, I understand why Ben cares about Israel, I do, but it's just like, here at TimCast, it's such a low priority, you know, like, but, but I, I, I agree with Ben, if someone here was advocating for child sex changes, we'd probably, yeah. right, like, you, do you, you develop yeah, a lot of talent or, um, like, I feel like developing uh, talent is difficult. I guess. I mean, I feel like what Daily Wire has been, I feel like Daily Wire kind of has like a monopoly of the conservative, of, of like developing talent underneath a conservative publisher oh, media uh, company. No you don't think so? Because you, they, they, I mean, you, you've done this. Like, so what she means, like you've had people on that were relative nobodies and became more successful, like on your show ever, and then left, right? At, like, well, at like, some point. So uh, Luke Rakowski, uh, we are changed before we are changed has existed well before freedom tunes so these are the co-hosts that we've had and and Phil Labonte, they all had their own platforms for coming on 
And uh, Luke and Seamus came on as just recurring guests. Phil is a private contractor for other areas of the company. Right. And we have him on as a co-host and it's of his own volition. Like, but I'm saying in your time, like where you've been on the platform, like you've de like you've developed I'm saying it's, it's, it's benefited launched, all yeah. of them as personalities right. coming on the show. Because like but, but Tommy Laren, the have, there's no, I have no contracts with these right. people. Like, so let me, let me stress for Phil, our agreement is mostly around like consulting in entertainment and stuff like this. And then as an aside, because he's here, I'm like, whenever you feel like coming on the show, you guys deal with it. And he, you, we love having him. He's a smart guy. Uh, Luke and Seamus, we had no yeah. agreements with. And I was like, come hang out, come on the show whenever you feel like it. There's no restrictions, no requirements. They can promote their own stuff and whatever. They still benefit from the show. We well, like, I, I got to be honest, like, I think we're really bad corporate wise here at Timcast in terms of I'll never go public for this reason. We don't have non-disparagements. Maybe we should. We don't do like agreements with people who come on the show for occurring roles and like, maybe we should. I don't know. We're fairly like, yeah. hey, but, look, unlimited sick time. Well, I think I'm, the, I'm a the Daily Wire yes. business model, though, is to develop talent, um, use their platform. What I thought is really interesting is like the Brett Cooper model. So they, I watched this kind of behind the scenes thing. They had this idea for a Gen Z wholesome girl that was going to talk about conservative topics. And they actually sent out like a casting thing and a bunch of people responded and they saw Brett Cooper. They're like, she's adorable. She's going to do it. And then they built the show around her. Right. And so, uh, and you know, if you look at her views compared to Ben and Candace, she gets yeah, more views than all it. of them. And uh, so one of the things I did think that like, if I were the daily wire, I would have been really mad at Crowder was that there was some, I don't know if um, Crowder implied it, but there was talk about uh, that Brett Cooper has a terrible contract with the Daily Wire, you know, because of the term sheet that Crowder got. Now, Crowder was already independent, a huge person. So to compare Brett Cooper's contract with Steve, it's like apples and oranges. You, sh you shouldn't be able to do that. But when somebody, you know, when you have a talent that's happy, that's bringing in a lot of money, bringing in a lot of views, and then there's somebody you know, a competitor that's basically shading their contract and now potentially going to cause like a Alex Cooper uh, barstool situation where that person wants to leave, that that would really upset me. So, yeah. or Tommy, Tommy Laird so, would so be So I think that may have put a that. target on Crowder's oh. head. <laughs> so we have Pop Culture Crisis, for instance. It is a show as part of the Tim Cast Company. Brett Dasovic and Mary Morgan are the hosts and we have no term. Uh, we, we, we actually, we might have a term contract like, I'm not sure, though. I could be wrong. But uh, we don't have any of this, your social media stuff. We own none of that stuff. At any point, I'm like, yeah, if like a different company came to them and said, wow, you're so great. We love your show. We want to hire you. I'd be like, oh, well, I guess they can leave. I just my attitude is always if you don't want to be here, you shouldn't be here. And I don't like the idea. Right. So I love this conspiracy theory about Candace Owens, which I don't think is true, but it's funny that she came out with the Bridget McCrone is a man thing to force the contract to break. <laughs> so the, right. Cause it was, that like, was a little, like, she's like, I will bet my whole career on this. I was like, wow. And, they, and, and I don't know that I, I believe this is true. The daily wire took those episodes down. Yeah. Oh, they did. Well, there were people, get people, people were tweeting this. And when you, when I looked on a Apple, like one of them wasn't there, but I'm like, <laughs> is it possible that Candace was having discussions with upper management daily wire? And they were saying things like, you know, look, you work here. We don't, you, you're not, you, you have a contract. You got to finish the contract. And Candace is like, I want to leave. I don't want to be here anymore. And they were like, you got to finish out your contract. And then Candace went, okay, Bridget McCrone is a man. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, you can leave. You can leave. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that that's true, but it's, it'd be fine. I, I had a conspiracy that was proven wrong, I guess, because I, I found some inside information. But, you know, Candace launched that Daily Wire channel with them on March 21st, 2021. And then Jeremy Boring came out and said that they were ending their agreement on March 22nd, 2024. So I'm like, I think it was just a three-year contract. I and agree. They, and, but, but so, you know, somebody with inside information said, no, actually, that I, she did get fired. But you know, wouldn't that make sense? I'm like, oh, I don't. I don't, you know, isn't that just a weird coincidence? I don't believe, like, what does it mean to get fired, right? So when I worked for Fusion, I was actually trying to break the contract. And they said, no. When my contract expired, they called me up and said, thank you and have a nice day. And I said, thank you very much. And so certainly people there are going to be like, oh, wow, they called Tim and told me he doesn't work here anymore. And it's like, well, right. he got, oh, he got fired. No, I was trying to quit, but I was under contract. When the contract ended, they then said, okay, now you can leave. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if, you know, Jeremy Boring said on that Twitter, on that X space, I can't comment. Obviously, someone running a company, I can't comment on people who have been fired or whatever. And everyone went, he, he confirmed it. He fired her or whatever. And I'm yeah. like, I think the contract expired. And then they said, have a nice day. I, 
I, I don't, I don't, we don't know. I, I know that somebody was trying to repeat Yeah, well, because I was, I, I kept I saying, a, oh, I think I it's a three contract. I have a crazy conspiracy yeah. about this too, right? And it ties back into Crowder. <laughs> it's all connected. <laughs> so listen, Candace saw what they offered Crowder. Yeah. I don't think Candace got that offer. I think we had a Tommy Laren situation where she was like, I need to get out of here and go make like money or do my own thing or something like that. And she was looking to get out of her contract because maybe like the Crowder I mean, deal was like a I lot for her. Maybe. This is, uh, my, this is my totally like nonsensical conspiracy that me, everything's secretly about money. It, it, a mean, lot of it is. A lot of it is, yeah. So uh, I can't remember. When were we in? Was it two years ago when we were in Nashville at Tim Castile? I can't remember. But uh, we went down and we did a week in the mobile studio with the Daily Wire guys. It was awesome. We did a special episode with Ben Shapiro. And uh, while there, uh, we didn't go down there for the explicit purpose of talking about Tim Cast joining Daily Wire or anything like that. But obviously we're hanging out and they said, you're doing really well. You're really big. What can we do together? Is there is there uh, something we can do? And I always tell people there is no no in business. There's only terms. And so I said, what do you got in mind? And they said, here's what we think, X, Y, and Z. One of the things was I said, uh, I feel like you got, I feel like the Daily Wire is stodgy, right? Suit wearing, you know, proper traditional, you know, and, and we're kind of weirdos at TimCast. Yeah. Skateboarding, weird clothes, rock star, Luke is a weird libertarian guy. And they're like, exactly, that's why we love it because it's, a, it's, a, it's an overlapping space that we think would benefit everybody. And uh, I've been in a lot of negotiations with big companies, big corporations. I, I have tremendous respect for Jeremy Boring. It was, yeah, me too. it was the, in, in terms of the meetings I've had, Jeremy was the most legit and honorable business meeting I've ever had. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, yeah. I'm waiting for the, for the BS. And he was, he, he talked to me like, like we're sitting here talking right now, dude, I've been at these meetings where they say these things that are stupid and obvious lies because they're hoping you're stupid enough to fall for it. And then you call them out and they go, oh, you know what? You were right. That Oh, OK, we'll have to change that. I'm like, no, that's it. You've wasted my time. No, with Jeremy, everything was straightforward. We went over numbers. And the ultimate conclusion was, uh, well, with all due respect, they couldn't afford it. Right. It didn't make yeah. sense as a business. Right. And like when Jeremy came out with that video to explain the whole crowd, like I because I've been in these negotiations, like what he was saying made a lot of sense to me. Um, and it's like, I don't know. I just feel like th there's obviously jealousy in like in life and business. And, and there's people that um, think that they can do what you do, right? They think that they can have a, you know, a studio and, and, and employees. And just because you're a personality, it doesn't mean that you can run a business. I think I've heard you talk about it before, but it's like very in the weeds. The people that are watching this stuff, Maybe they don't even really care. They don't need to know how, you know, how you bake the cake or whatever. They just want to consume it. And I think that like, but, but because there's this, um, you know, sometimes when you have like a legal spat or whatever, it becomes content. I mean, Dave Portnoy, when he fought with the, the, yeah. the girls, he went on their podcast and was like, these are the most greedy, like this is the most <laughs> greedy, disgusting thing I've ever experienced. You know how Dave is, like yeah, he'll great. just put it out there. I mean, it's so, it's great and people love that, but it's like, you know, I, I think people are, are, are starting to realize that this is, and everybody picks a side. The, I will say the, 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 you know, in talking with the Daily Wire guys, there's one thing I will admit in two seconds, man, if we had their managerial and marketing apparatus, yeah. all the stuff we do would be 10 times bigger. They they do an excellent job of all that stuff. And, uh, you know, I can look at a camera and complain. That's about well, all I'm good they, at. They, Here's the thing too. It, like, oh, but that's ahead. the thing. It's like when you get to a certain like scale, like you're never going to be more successful uh, under another umbrella like that's the problem that's if why they couldn't, that's why they couldn't afford no, no 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 no. I, even I, even later like those barstool girls because they were get they got a great deal for 99 percent of people we're going to give you a shot here's a flat fee for a contract or whatever and they were that overwhelming you know the tommy laren where they find some 20 year old and she becomes a super success but also yeah and then I, like i just I, I disagree i i genuinely believe and this is like one of the first things jeremy and i were talking about is that if we had their production, managerial, and marketing apparatus behind us, we would be 10 times bigger. Like, uh, the money would be massive. Yeah, you have but, to respect but, but, what no, they no, the reason what you would take, what you would take would be, because would be, you get a flat fee uh, based on, like, you know well, what I mean? I, 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 I don't want to say too much about... Okay, with, without getting into the details, in theory. Uh, it, was, it wasn't a flat fee. Okay. It was, it was a pretty good deal, and it just, it didn't work. The issue was, you know, basically what I said to the guys is, it is a great deal. You are right that 
like we're down here and Daily Wire's here in terms of experience and apparatus, and that would lift us up super yeah. quick. I'm also kind of, I was like, I think, I think I said this publicly. I was like, one of the problems is like, what if I feel like buying a billboard that says Liz Cheney's a fat pig? Mm -hmm. And they all went, oh yeah. yeah. Like, like oh, yeah. it's, a, you gotta be in a team if you're here and there's like strategies and PR stuff. And so I was like, you see, that's the problem. And uh, ultimately what it came down to was, I believe they're correct. I also think, you know, I was like, I guess the problem is there's a certain point for me, I guess, where we make enough to where even if you offered me a hundred million dollars, I'd just be like, I don't know what to do with that money. Dude. <laughs> you have independence though and being able to run your own thing and yeah. so you're happy the, with that, the, right? The, or Yeah, the, the issue about not being able to afford it was like, I literally wouldn't know what to do with the money other than give it away. <laughs> so it's like, we, we, we do well here. I, I think it'd be great if we, like, you know, we've been saying on the show, like everyone should get fit by November. I think those things would greatly benefit the anti-establishment, libertarian, conservative, post, whatever you want, anti-woke movement. And I'd, I'd love it if that was a message that went out to 100 million people. But I'm also kind of like, I think the real challenge is not so much the money, but like, you know, I want to buy a billboard and I want to insult Liz Cheney. You know what I mean? Do you agree, though, that like when you go into a deal, so I, everybody's like, well, he got, a, you know, Crowder gave a bad deal. So if you're a business, you're obviously going to ask for you're going to put something forward that is in your favor and then see what, because it goes back and no. forth like ping pong. No way. No? I say no way. You come to me with an offer that does that, I throw it in the garbage and I say, don't email me again. Well, depending on the leverage though, right? Because what if you're a Brett Cooper, you don't have a show, you don't have any followers and they're like- Same same thing. Same. Uh, when I was first starting out, one of the big agencies, one of the big five or whatever, gave me a massive contract and I went <laughs> into the garbage. And I was like, don't waste my time. And they were like, you're never going to make it in this industry unless you're willing to play a ball. And I was just like, dude, I'm not going to hire a lawyer to go through your stupid contract. One That's of the true. one of the biggest radio networks wanted to syndicate uh, my morning my morning show, and we had this great meeting, and they talked, and they said all these great things, and they were like, here's how we'll do it. We're going to sell ads. We're going to keep 20%. And I was like, this is fantastic. They're like, you're looking at three to $4 million a year. And I was like, wow. And the contract they sent me included clauses that said they own the whole company from this point forward. Basically, they were like, ooh, I hope he signs this because then we own it instantly. Yeah. And, I, and I, I read through it and I said, hey, there's a clause in here that says upon signing, you, you assume ownership of my company. And they were like, well, you know, these things are in there. And I said, I was like, email me when you're serious. And they, and they emailed me back and said, these things are totally normal in contract negotiations, Tim. You should hire your lawyer to redline these things. And I said, if you aren't taking this meeting seriously and you expect me to spend money because you're trying to sneak garbage into this contract, you are an untrustworthy business partner. Have a nice day. Bye. Yeah, I mean, Tim, they were just trying to get you on a radio show, but also secretly take your whole company. Like, buy all, th This is why I was well, saying I don't agree with that. I like that. the Daily Wire because yeah. when, I, when, when, I, when we went through all this stuff, there's none of that. Jeremy was like, X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C. What do you think? And I was like, wow, that's a that's a pretty good deal. Well, I just don't know no, if I, I, there, I do agree. I, I disagree. Well, I agree that I think that you should put a contract that you think is fair, but you there might be something that's really important to someone that you don't know about. Like, for example, I had a I would do carve outs all the time for my influencers. So I had um, you know, a girl that came and she's like, I already have a um a t-shirt company or whatever and so and it's doing really well and whatever and so i'm like okay well we're not going to help you build that because you already have that so i'll carve that out anything that you make off of that you, i won't take a penny of it but if you're coming in and and you you know i'm gonna have you live in a tiktok house and spend all this money to develop you and we're gonna do a clothing brand together and i'm gonna hire a marketing company to do the emails you know what i'm saying and then then yeah i would like a piece of that and so i think that in any you have to kind of figure out what is important. Yeah, I'm not going to know for sure that so, she had a t-shirt company. So maybe it would have said, hey, if you have a t-shirt company, then I get a piece right. until she tells me, you know, this is what I think is fair. And with those influencers I had, I went back and forth for like months with them. So for then for the article to be, um, you know, getting signed isn't everything, you know, I want to be an influencer, but getting signed isn't everything, making it seem like I'm some type of witch that, you know, th no, that, that's he, not that's fair. That's totally normal. Like I have a guy that grabs the sponsors for me, but I had pre-existing relationships with nonprofits or what, well, a nonprofit. So I'm like, yeah, I need a carve out for that. Right. And they're like, oh, I don't know if we could do that. I'm like, but I'm not signing it's, because so, but like, it's easy why would to I see, Like It's easy to see how somebody can say like, you see how Crowder gave a bad deal. It's like people said that about me too. I mean, I just think it's important to go 
like but well, we have to see yeah. it like that's one of so we don't have a lot of this information one of the most fascinating things in this industry especially running any business is the people who are like you should give me more money than i produce yeah and you're like okay well how do i how do you suppose i do that and they're like i don't know do it and you're like no so the way <laughs> the way we we do things here is uh if you have pre-existing ip that you're working on we likely will not hire you but we can contract you for certain things. So that's why there's a handful of people here who are just contractors for one set thing. And that means there are certain limitations on what they can and can't do with the company. And then for anybody who works here, we own everything. So if you say, I want to come work for your company, anything you make while here, we own. However, the way we basically structure the deals is once we recuperate initial investment on your labor costs, production costs or whatever we do, we then basically start scaling up your pay to the point where we're, we're taking it like more like an agency than an employer. So the easiest way to describe it is, let's say somebody writes a book and the book fails. Okay, well, how much do we spend on, on you to write the book, right? Okay, so your salary at the time over, over the t period of writing this book was, you know, fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So we'll put that in the red. Don't worry, we're going to keep paying you your salary. But if that book sells a million copies, we're going to subtract what we already paid you uh, and the costs around it and then keep 20% and the rest goes to you. you it, it's it's good that you use a book as an analogy because that sounds like an advance for a publisher. Like right. you give you certain well, amount of money. It, well, so, yeah. so just, just to clarify, like a lot, what a lot of companies will do is they'll say, we'll pay you $100,000 a year to do the show and then we'll give you a bonus up to X amount. Then the show's generating millions of dollars and they're like, too bad. I, we, don't, we don't do it that way. So I, I don't know the full deal of the you, Portnoy thing, but the way I would do it and and I think this is better for retaining talent too, is if if you, I'm like, hey, look, if your show makes $10 million and it costs us 800,000 to produce, we'll take a million, you can have the rest. So we get that, we get that premium on top, on top, that basically makes it worth us for us to continue operating as a profit, but you get rich, we're here to support it, you. Port, Portnoy tried this, by the way, because he was like, listen, like they had 18 months left on their contract. It was something like that. And he was like, the show makes so much money because they, they were a huge hit. They were like the number six podcast in the world. Which one was it? It was like the Call it's Me Daddy Call podcast. Call Her Daddy. Yeah. So it was, it was that. So it made so much money. That also he was because like, it filled a niche that Barstool didn't have. Yeah. It was women. I mean, he, they didn't really have women before He's that. like, I'll shorten the term. You can keep the IP, but please do the show for like six months Especially more. Especially because it was keeping yeah. them going throughout the pandemic. That was what was paying the bills, I guess. Because they were like, they. I think they got paid like an initial deal, which, you know, is a great deal. He gave deal. them bonuses. It was yeah. like a sliding scale based off of downloads and merch sales. I'm going to give you extra but bonuses. He was, he was very honest. He's like, every podcast is like 100K in, in ad sales. So like he's losing so much money for them not doing this weekly show. Well, that they he's were like, being I'll shorten the term, whatever, about just to come be back super to shady. work. You know, there was a guy that worked, the, he calls him Suit Man. It's so funny. The whole saga is the hilarious. It's the it got actually, that whole yeah. saga got me interested in Caller Daddy because I didn't even hear about it before. But Suit Man was this like uh, suit. And I think, I don't know if he was a talent agent or he worked at HBO but he was dating one of the girls this girl yeah. Sophia and he was the one that said why don't you guys just leave um call her daddy you don't leave the IP behind and start this thing at Wondery and we're going to call it the fathers because they called themselves you know yeah. the daddy gang and so anyway so he so this guy was like advising his girlfriend and and his girlfriend was Sophia and Alex and so he causes all these problems well at the end Alex Cooper takes the deal that um, Barstool gives and Sophia doesn't take it. Well, guess what? Alex got the IP and then she went and got a $60 million deal Spot with Spotify. Yeah, and guess, Spotify. Guess, what, <laughs> guess what Sophia got? Yeah. Not wow. even mentioned on the first. She hasn't even been mentioned on the podcast. Like It's like she went away. And honestly, she got a bad deal, but it's... It's bad business to go around and screw people I, over. I'm sorry. I don't agree get, that I don't agree that their deal was bad. Like, look, I don't think there, so there was a, there was a time that well, I know you don't yeah. agree, but there was a time when I started out. If you offer me a contract of like you know like around 50k a year guaranteed money, I probably would have considered it because I was not you know when you start out a YouTube channel, you're making like four grand in ad AdSense, right? Yeah. But like you know later, That's actually pretty good. Yeah. Like, well, I meant for like a first like or second year so like you know it's it's pretty bad so then i'm like but like there's like times now where I, where I found my taxes and i'm like what i would have taken as a salary i'm now like ch chucking at the government right so it's like but like at the time that's stability it's a consistent paycheck stability is whether huge. you mess i mean up. to be honest with you now i'm like in this game and 
I mean, at first I was like, oh, you know, maybe maybe the Daily Wire would hire me. And then I'm like, no. I mean, like I have like pictures of me with like a low cut shirt on. I'm like, God forbid, oh. you know, there's no way they could hire me. So, you know, maybe, but would I take a job maybe at Barstool or at Valuetainment or, you know, I, I would consider it for sure because it's, it H- is haven't, stability. Haven't you heard that I'm a Daily Wire show? And even though like, <laughs> they, they, I don't know anybody there, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get hired with them imminently. Me and Anna are going to do a show there, Anna Kasparian. Like, it's gonna happen <laughs> all right good luck just manifest it i wonder though why do you think that people aren't doing that brett cooper model of like um you know coming up with a format and um and then hiring the talent well, for it they do yeah it's just you got to find someone who's actual talent you only know them when they're brett cooper you don't know all right. the ones that they miss on I... and there's a lot of them you think a lot of media companies are doing that oh absolutely tommy tommy I Laren like was a lot the of big people one are, before like are, the blaze developed this girl like, from 20 at, years old to like now she's on fox right but look at x for example like still? they're know. hiring don lemon why don't they build people out or um i don't know i feel like people are trying you to know, get I, i'll tell you yeah um anybody who's got the skills to do it uh doesn't need your money and uh like so look i go to the daily wire they say hey we'll pay you a lot of money and i'm like yeah, but I already have my own company. I can do whatever I want and I'm rich. So like, why would I take this deal? And they're like, well, you'll be richer. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. So, you know, I've talked to people who have got growing channels and I said, would you want to sign with us? We'll basically, we'll pay you more than you're making now. And then here's how the deal would work. Like we take a percentage off of it. And they're like, why would I do that? Oh, and I'm like, because you'll have more money now. And they're like, I'll have more money in a year. And I'm like, yep, fair point. It's interesting that you say that because I feel like we're living in a time where everybody wants to be a creator. And, and, and I think that maybe what it is is that it's still hard to find talent. Like we're paying a premium for talent because people that are have, um, you know, the, the work ethic to do it, the, um, you know, they have the consistency. I mean, it's you would think that there would be millions of people you could choose from, but it's still a very small amount of people that can like survive as independent creators. I, I talked about this uh, skateboarder who has a channel and he's got a couple hundred thousand subscribers and he did an interview on, on some podcast where he was like, it sucks. It's not what people think it is. Being an influencer is not fun, blah, blah, blah. And the issue is a lot of people think that being an influencer is you're in front of a camera having fun things and you make, you make money. What, and I was like, what this guy didn't understand is being an influencer is being a video editor, a mm-hmm. photographer. Uh, you know, you got to do thumbnails. You got to do your own marketing. Tags, all that. Yeah, exactly. Thing. So it's not It's not just... And this is, this is basically what the Daily Wire's pitch to me was like, just be Tim Pool. Let us do the business and it'll be bigger. And I'm like, you are correct, but... I kind of like doing business. Yeah, it's the it's the work yeah. behind the scenes is like you get because I'm constantly in editing. Like I'm now like pushing to do like more videos a day, and I fully edit them. So I'm like, like it's yeah, it same. gets annoying, but like I enjoy that back end stuff. And it's like I don't want like you could do it. Like you know, uh, like my friend Nuance Bro is teaming up with Lisa, who like works for you, the Booker, and they're doing a show right now where they just shoot the nonsense and nuance podcast or whatever. They shoot and like somebody takes care of it. They, they clip it. They do all that stuff. That sounds so nice. But at the same time, I kind of like the grind yeah, in same. the back. Well, and those like, are I, the most successful. I like knowing all that stuff. Creators, you know? I think the ones, I mean, if you look at Mr. Beast, what he did is he, you know, he was like I, just going back and forth with thumbnail. I mean, he lives and breathes content creation and he loves it. And that's what it takes. But a lot of people just see and they, oh, I want to make money as an influencer. They don't realize like what you, it, you read his but, quotes and you're like, he's on a whole other level. But even he's him, so concerned. He's like, I, he's like, I could eat dinner with my friend or make yeah. <laughs> uh, or make a quarter of a million dollars in that hour. Like, but like, you know? like, um, yeah, but, but here, here's the question I have for that, too. It's like, and do what with? Oh, he gives it away. I know that's that that that's the the challenge. I mean, it, it, the hard thing is obviously if you know the Tim Cast company was making ten times more money, we'd be doing crazier things. But it's like it can only grow as it can grow. You know, uh, uh, an important thing to understand is money. Money doesn't do what people think it can do. Money, money is is like. It's not going to change the limitations of humanity. For instance, we've been trying for two years to open this coffee shop. And the biggest problem we've had across the board is contractors. We've got a great team that works uh, works with us now and we're super excited. But we've gone through th- through so many who will just take your money and run. And there's nothing you can do about it. So, 
you'd think having money, you could be like, I'm going to open a business and we're going to, yeah, good luck. That You got to go through government. Then the government right. acts like it's not their fault. And then there's permitting and then there's, oh no, now you got to do this thing. They keep kicking it back. On that, oh, oh, we didn't realize that was a problem. Now do this. So you, if someone, if someone came to me and said, we'll put a hundred million dollars in your bank account, I'd be like, what am I going to do with that? Yeah, like, you could certain, you could make Chicken well, City out there like a lot more elaborate. With I already have. I know you. a <laughs> seven hundred square foot Chicken City live stream, and I'll tell you, this was a funny thing when we launched it. We were at the Daily Wire. It was making twenty thousand dollars a month. <laughs> Chicken City, okay, was making twenty thousand dollars a month. I was heavily promoting it. We put up a billboard in Times Square. I mean, it was Chicken City gold. <laughs> it doesn't make that much, nearly that much money now, but it pays for the chickens to live. So like these chickens wow. are doing the work. <laughs> we wanted to do a bit where we ordered potato starch sheets and we were going to make paychecks and then feed, like give them out, but then the chickens would eat them, but they actually didn't want to eat them. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, like here's the thing that, that, that I think is like a trend right now that's happening is that there's this like... People understand that if they play the victim in on their YouTube or whatever, that it's going to give them a boost. And it's this like cry bully thing where it's like, if I if I do this thing and, and I think it stems from they see somebody like a crowder or like you and they say, well, I could do that. This guy's a jerk. He's making all this money like he doesn't deserve it. So I'm going to go ahead and and do this thing to take them out. And I just like it bothers me because it's like people don't realize how hard it is to be an entrepreneur and like really do all the things. And so yeah. I just really hate cry bullies. By the way, I made my shirt. It says, uh, it says cry bull or okay, cry bully. The struggle is fake. <laughs> but I really think like cry bullies need to be called out because it's- Yeah, for sure. Look, there- It's there not a cool way to make content. I mean, I don't know. It's a lame way to, to uh, do content. Whatever whatever contract issues that may come out that I'm actually concerned with aside, especially from somebody who promoted himself as, you know, the best example, going to do it different, going to do it better. Uh, like the guy is clearly somebody who built himself up like, you know, with his team and all that. It's a family business to his success. And there are people who just hate him for being successful, 100 percent. And they think your job is super easy. And to be clear, like I have the greatest job in the world. I commute from, I got a new apartment where I have an actual studio room. I was working out of my bedroom for six years. I commute to the next room over, make videos about things <laughs> that I'm interested in, edit them, upload them. And then randomly people expect like whatever topic, if I want to talk about the Netflix Avatar Last Airbender, guess what? I can do that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, Where are you based out of? Uh, new York. There's an, there's an earthquake. Yeah. I, my fiance has been texting Aww. me. Yeah. yeah. 4.8. Wow. It's a big one. Yeah, I certainly think this job is substantially easier than like working at Walmart. I, I worked at a grocery store when I was a teenager and it's miserable, <laughs> unfuffilling. I worked at uh, uh, American Airlines' regional airline. It's, 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 it's the American Airlines company at O'Hare. And uh, you get, it's tedious. At least you get exercise, I guess. I was lifting 50,000 pounds per day. That's crazy. Because you all these bags, you're lifting oh, wow. them all. Oh, total. Like not not no, not, no not just all one. I want. No, it's like you lift so many bags by the end of the day, we like maybe it's not fifty thousand. I think we did the we did the math because eat the bags are estimated at thirty to sixty pounds on average. And then you lift like I don't know, a hundred, you know, uh every load or like depending on what you're doing. So uh but those jobs suck. And then it was funny when Hassan said streaming is like the worst job or whatever. Oh my god! It's social battery, man. Like you know. Well, so why Dude. why do you think that Jared hasn't like developed his career in the last six years? I think I think being out of the game for like a couple of years is damaging. If you're not around, you're not relevant. Or, but or, it also could well, be like he worked in this niche role. He's a product of Crowder. He yeah. doesn't have the wherewithal to become. That's what I think. Yeah, but, but it's he, like he, he has but his video was all about still. how it's all Crowder's fault. And I just think, listen, when I was in the lawsuit with Taylor Lorenz, there's a lot of things I couldn't say, a lot of things I couldn't do. And then I come out the gate, and I have a you know YouTube channel that have a lot of people that that are watching. I'm literally like two weeks in now. Granted, you made yourself the talent. Yeah, well, I did because I'm like I'm much easier to manage than <laughs> a bunch of other people. But the thing is, it's like it's still a grind. Like right now, nobody's paying me. Like you know, you make a couple super chats here and there, but you know, I like it. When when I was you know basically canceled by by Taylor in my industry because not everybody maybe cared about this, but you know, my the big brands. I mean, do you know who Gary Vaynerchuk is? Gary V. He yeah. was my mentor. I mean, he's a very good friend of mine, and he was like championing me a lot. And in the article, basically, Taylor made it seem like I name drop him, and I don't even know him. But anyway, um, you know, I 
I was kind of like not allowed to do what I love to do, which was, you know, work with brands, help them match with influencers and then help influencers monetize because, you know, that's what I love to do. So I was out of the game. I had I moved to Vegas and then I got a job at um, uh, at a it's called a casino hotel, one of the best ones. And I mean, I was getting paid very little. Um, but, you know, the thing that I, I really hated about working in like that corporate environment is just the politics. It's like, you're not allowed to talk to this person. Like if I wanted to do something, the you know, a friend of mine would be like, oh, well, you can't talk to her about it. You have to do it like this. And then when I went on Tucker Carlson, I got, uh, I had to go into the office to talk to like a big marketing guy. And he was like, don't mention our company, like when you're on Fox News. And I'm like, you know, I just like, I don't like this. I mean, I did it and I got humbled. It humbled me a bit, but um but I love to do this now and I'm making a lot less. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to, we're going to wrap things up. I want to give a shout out to Nate, the lawyer who super chatted oh, he's saying, awesome. uh, OMG, both Sean and Ari, literally my two favorite people. Tim is all right too. LOL. <laughs> Suing people with no money is known as judgment proof. That's, that's what I, the term I was looking for. Oh, Stormy nice. Daniels, for example, owes Trump 600 K. Right. So when you have like, let's say a former employee, uh, steals something, disparages you, you go to your lawyer and you say, okay. What can we do? And they go, wow, do you have a non-disparagement? Yes, I do. And I go, great. Do you have, an, do you have a non-disclosure? I absolutely do. Okay. And it looks like that was criminal as well. Yep. Uh, what's the net worth? I don't know. Negative. And they're like, so what are you going to win? And I'm like, I don't know. Can we stop them right. from doing it? No. And they like, go, okay, <laughs> I just can't do anything about it. They, they could declare bankruptcy too. So even if like, you know, you were like, oh, well, if I have the judgment against them, eventually, like when they make money, <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna like, you know, pay. if you sue like Monolithic Ethos, who was going after you yesterday, right? Like, you know, he doesn't have any <laughs> money now, but like, you know, eventually in the eventually. future, but he'll like, but he'll declare bankruptcy. He'll avoid it. All accountability, like the journalism yeah. machine that he is, you know? <laughs> well, well, well uh, this was, this has been a very fun conversation. Yeah. You guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, do, you wanna, do you want to shout anything out before we wrap up? Nothing. Just, you know, it, support me by uh, watching my show. You can uh, find everything. I'm Little Miss Jacob on pretty much all social media and I, uh, littlemissjacob.com. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, you can find all of my social media at just actualjusticewarrior.com. Uh, you know, Twitter, everything's there. Just that's it. All I right. I said in the beginning. All right, everybody, make sure to subscribe to Tenant Media. Thanks for hanging out watching the show. We are back tonight at Timcast IRL, 8 p.m. on YouTube, and we'll see you all then.